All right. Well, after a week away, we're back. We're live. This is the Xbox Two Podcast, episode 263, I believe, on uh, April 263, 262, whatever it says in the thing. I don't, I don't, I'm not I, keeping track. Oh, whatever. I've wrote 262 everywhere, so I've probably got the number wrong. But Maybe it's 262, yeah, 263. <laughs> Something but, uh, like that. On this <laughs> wonderful April 28th, Friday, hope everybody's doing well. I am your host, Randall Thor19, the man with a million. And with me, as always, we have the managing editor of Windows Central. The man playing Minecraft Legends in this little video because I just couldn't be, I just, I just couldn't do it. When when Minecraft Legends won the vote, <laughs> Jez complained, be like, "Oh, really?" I'm like, "Bro, that's that's your job. You better get this footage because I'm playing Minecraft Legends again." <laughs> so yeah, so the Patreons voted for some Minecraft Legends action, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have another vote next week with quite a lot of games we could include in the vote next week. Yeah, not Dead uh, Island too though, because that'll get demonetized. Really? Why? Oh yeah, that well, Dead Island Two is like literally the goriest game ever. It, it, as soon as YouTube sees that you got Dead Island Two footage, boom, demonetized. Oh really? They don't I like that, that blood and guts and gore and stuff. Absolutely. I, I every well, single creator I've seen talk about that game have talked about how basically they got demonetized. Yeah, immediately, and there's like no way That's around so it. Annoying. Even if you try to censor the stuff. That's so. But anyways, annoying. we're here. Uh, you know it's uh. Well, personally for me, it's been a uh, pretty awful two weeks. Uh, last week, I spent like the entire, every single day at the vet for like four or five hours. And then we had to do something that we, we, we knew had to be done because Shakespeare was getting uh, really, really sick. He, he, you know, he's an English Mastiff. He's like seven years old. He weighed 210 pounds and... He was all the way down to two hundred. He was all the way down to one hundred and thirty, um, yeah. and he wasn't eating. So basically, we had to put him down on Saturday, and it was uh, it was really it was really tough. And I just want to thank all the, you know, people who messaged me on Twitter or on Xbox or DM'd me on Discord. It means a lot because I was, I was you know, quite upset. Um, so to to see all the messages, all the support that the community. Showed me, I've you know helped a little bit. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, um, but it was it was definitely really rough, and I just was not in the mood. I was did not have the energy. I did not have the passion. I didn't. I just couldn't do the sh- show. I just like spending all that time at a vet every single day. Just it's like nah, I can't. I can't do this stuff. And then um, to add even more bad news, my my grandpa died this week on Wednesday. Uh, which is why you know I don't really have any videos about the ABK stuff because you know family member died and I just was like ah, I just I just can't I just don't feel the passion about any of this stuff right now so yeah it's been a it's been a pretty awful two weeks for me uh so I'm sorry man it'll get better we're we're here we got the Xbox Two community we got Jez we're gonna talk about some video games hopefully make me feel a little bit better. Um, we got, uh, you know, Star Wars is out and that's my, been my most anticipated game for the whole year. So I am super stoked to finally start that game. Although apparently it runs like ass everywhere. Uh, Ass on Xbox, ass on PS5, garbage on PC. What's up with all these PC releases that have been just, I thought that was supposed to be the master race. What's going on? Dude, I... I don't know what's going on with PC, man. Like, we had this issue with uh, Wild Hearts, and well, Long had issues too, and now we've got Star Wars with issues, and we've got Redfall launching with 30 frames per second. Mm. I don't know. It seems like an industry-wide issue right now. And uh, one of the things Sony said in its um, investor call this week was, you know, it warned investors about profitability because of the rising costs of making video games. And I suppose one of the one of the reasons this is happening is because publishers are, you know, basically cutting corners to, because of the rising costs and stuff. But I don't know, it's a whole other topic to get into. But yeah, it's been it's been quite a week in the video game world. Um, 
uh, r- regulatory drama with yeah. ABK, yeah, a bunch yeah. of new games dropping. I've started reviewing games again uh, after not reviewing any for ages. Reviewing a couple of pretty big ones right now. Are you right reviewing now. anything right now you can't talk about? Yeah. Perhaps, yeah. perhaps something, yeah. you know, that was delayed from last year, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, baby. Mm, but yeah. uh, you like last week. I reviewed, uh, I reviewed a small... A small, well, not not a small indie game actually. It's a paradox strategy game with a massive budget. So it's it's weird calling it a small indie game, but um, you know, it's it's uh, I suppose it's it doesn't have a massive massive marketing budget like some of these other games though. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been addicted to Loop Hero as well. Have you heard of that Loop Hero? I've heard of it, but I haven't played it. Um... Oh man, it's so addictive. I don't. I don't suppose you'd like it, but yeah, probably it's, uh, not my type of game. Auto battler. Uh, hey, I like vampires. Remember when you said you were going to beat Persona Five? Have you beat Persona Five yet? I've uh, I've been putting a lot of hours in Persona. Actually, I'm, uh-huh, I'm, uh-huh. I'm forty-five hours now. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, forty-five hours. Is that? I, I have no idea how far into the game I am, but I'm I'm putting in hours, bro, and I'm re- I'm loving it. The more I play it, the more I love it. So I think I'm going to actually finish that game. Oh, all eventually. right. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You, you, no, nobody here believed in me. Oh, well, 20% of you or something. Everyone, we did a poll. You said I wouldn't finish hey, Persona. It, well, if the poll was, you guys. If the poll was, <laughs> I'm going to play Persona, I'd, I'd have your back because you do play a lot of games. But when it's like, I'm going to beat this game, I mean, I'm sorry, Jazz. You just have proven time and time Mm-mm. again Unless you're reviewing something, you don't really you don't really do that. You don't really beat those games. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're so, gonna we're gonna see. I'm, ch- yeah, I'm changing the rules, man. I should I'm I should have given you a time rule. limit. I should have been like, you have a month. Oh no, screw Instead that. Instead of because you That's could you, you could beat it in in like a year from now and be like, look, I beat Persona in 2024. I should have been like, no, nah, you got you got four months to beat this game. Put a Bro, time limit on it. Come I on. mean, come on. I'm bu- I'm a busy guy, man. Yeah, busy guy. I mean, uh-huh. One of the one of, I tell you one of the reasons why I've actually been able to play it so much is one of the re- one of the reasons why oftentimes that I, I struggle to get through some of these games is because you know TV battles you know fighting the girlfriend over the, over at TV access but to remedy this I put I installed full blown Windows on my Steam Deck so I could get full blown Game Pass on my Steam Deck not none of this cloud gaming stuff so I've been playing Persona there quite a lot. I was playing Persona on my phone, but you know the screen's not very big and all that kind of stuff. So I just thought, you know what, if I'm playing, if I'm playing it cloud, cloud based on my Steam Deck, I might as well just install it natively at this point, point. and it runs like a dream. Sixty frames a second, four or five hour battery life. It's great. It's awesome. It's great. But uh, it already looks like some company's about to eat the Steam Deck's lunch. I don't know if you've seen that. Right? Yeah, yeah. We'll probably there's a, there's a lot we're going to talk about today. This is going to be a yes. big show. We got extra double Patreon questions and all that stuff. Uh yes, big show. Know, we got we got the whole ABK thing which shocked apparently everybody. All the insiders, all the experts, uh even Microsoft themselves I think were completely shocked. Uh, yes. when the CMA dropped the decision. So we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about, uh, geez, I don't know, uh, Hi-Fi Rush, because that happened a couple weeks ago. We didn't talk about that. Game Pass, a Billion, and all these other things, uh, you know, and then whatever you guys want to talk about in chat as well. You can always steer the conversation with the Stupor Chats, uh, you know, by supporting the channel. And, uh, you know, with, with that, Jez, uh... You know, I guess I guess it's time to get into a little little housekeeping. Make sure you guys hit the like button if you haven't already and share this out. Let everybody know we're live. But uh, we do have some housekeeping. We we are this episode is sponsored once again, and I will hand it over to Jez for and this one is I you mean I, I read the first Ooh, first getting character, bro. I read the first sentence and I was just like, Okay, this is yeah, all right. <laughs> Has your sixty nine billion dollar deal been blocked? regulatory stress got you growing hair in all the wrong places Mm. try out manscaped the world leaders in below the waist grooming manscaped (laughs) manscaped products keep your juicy bits looking trim and proper so you can emerge from billion dollar regulatory meetings feeling like a champ Grab the lawnmower 4.0 and trim those boxer weeds. Or grab the whole package for your grabbable package. The 
performance package 4.0. Mm. Grab all of this and much more for 20% off with free worldwide shipping with our checkout code XB2. That's checkout code XB and the number two at manscaped.com. And thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> $69 billion deal blocked. It's because they didn't have Manscaped. Poor Phil. <laughs> you know? Yep. If <sighs> they if they were if they you know if they were rocking Manscaped, maybe the deal wouldn't have got blocked. You know, maybe I'm, uh, not, I'm not a I'm not a scientist, Rand. I'm not a, I'm not a medical expert, but I've heard that Manscaped actually helps you get through regulatory meetings. You know, it's quite, it's quite possible and shown. that when the CMA was uh, was looking through this deal, they weren't <laughs> wearing the Manscaped boxers and they were just all chafed. And they were like, yep, screw chafed. this. They were all upset. Yep. They were all angry. Yep. And they're like, we're just going to, we're going to block this. But if they were yep. wearing the Manscaped boxers, this deal would, exactly. be, would be approved. But anyways. It'd be, it'd be smooth yeah. as balls. There we go. <laughs> So thank you to Manscaped. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have oh uh, other incredible people at Patreon. Uh, I apologize. We were supposed to have an Xbox 2 Plus One show on Tuesday. Uh, but yes. for obvious reasons, uh, I didn't feel up to the show. We were going to have King David on from Iron Lords Podcast. We will be doing that show on Tuesday, so a couple days from now. So we will be having two two xbox two plus one shows next month as, as well as the regular xbox two ultimate um so keep that in we're mind we're going hard next yeah month. we got a lot of loads lot of, of patreon a lot, lot of stuff to do next week but we do have some patreon shout outs to get through we have the grandest of bip chris pernice starsman hey blinken the bearded tate sleets army dude 52c mr butter jeans william schumacher ryan kipple foreign object mythic marty tyler gunstar 75 moronic donkey 99 see money mario kart madman on youtube Makazilla, Haters Will Be Haters, Randall Thor 19, Silas, Eric Gregory, Elijah Vasquez, James Moore, Halo is the franchise player, Katriox, <laughs> Ricky Fallon, Bytrunger 1, Jasper Shap, Joseph Campbell, Blastos, 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 <laughs> Blastos. <laughs> Mr. Joanna Dark, Justin Duell, Frank Mariano, PB Bro King, Justin Miller, Asa T, and Madison, Untidy Tim, Grizzly Mofo OG, Governor Grimm, DZ Huffin, Justin Sego, Andrew Courtney, Wagerman, Achievement, The Scarecrow 121, Darren Tropy, Prof JJJ, Butterball 8, Ghostface Killer, Wolf King, KPZ, and the Shorts Master, Ralph Wiggum. Thank you guys for uh, supporting guys. the show on Patreon. Really appreciate it. You can sign up at patreon.com slash xb2. We've got some questions that will happen at the end of the show. And uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. We do we do some member chats here. We got Joe uh, Joe Repco, aka Flame, member for 22 months, saying, "Rand, I'm sorry to hear about the loss of Shakespeare. He was a good dog, and you gave him so many good years in his life after what he went through." And uh, I mean, thank you. The support has been amazing. Like I looked on that tweet, and it has like 600 600 replies, which is a, you know more than I could ever imagine. And it was just everybody. There wasn't like one that was like, I'm glad, you know, there's always like some troll that might slip in there and be like, you know, he deserved it or you deserved it. Cause you're a filthy X spot. Right. You know, but everybody was like very, very much like, Hey, we're sorry for your loss. And I needed to hear it because it's, you know, that, that day and the day before were like, I was like a mess. Um, you know, and I don't even like, like, it's not that I don't want to talk about it on here, but, like, I know if I talk about Shakespeare and, like, w what he, you know, would do through the day or whatever, like, I would start to get emotional. And I don't want to get emotional and start crying. Uh, so, like, I'm kind of just kind of just glossing over the topic because I could reminisce about him, how he was part of the show, how so many times you'd hear him bark because somebody was walking in front of the house or... You know, things like, oh, I'll, I'll never see this again. So it's like, I don't want to get, like, all of my feelings about this. Um, but I, I, I do want to thank everybody. Like Space Dovakin, member for 24 months, saying we love you, Rand. Thank you, Space. Um, really appreciate all of you for being here and all the messages. Uh, means more than you can possibly imagine. I, I know, like, people say, I, I, you know, it really does mean the world when you – someone reaches out to you and tell like 
and I, you know, we have so many people that watch this show. I have so many subscribers here on YouTube. Um, it's always very difficult to get to know all of them. Like I see names and I recognize people who've been here for a long time, but there's so many. And then, you know, to get DMS from people that I, you know, I don't recognize and say how much like, Oh, you know, the, the show means to them or how much we help them. And then they're so sad. Like I, I just DMS in my, in my, you know, messages on Twitter, um, you know, from people that, you know, I just, it, I don't know. It kind of, it kind of made me feel a certain way. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of even getting a little, little emotional now, but, um, yeah, I, it, we got an awesome community. Here, man. Yeah, that mm. is very true. So, um, I don't know if I'll get another dog to be honest with you, maybe in the future, maybe down the road. Um, but this is the first time we I've been without a dog since I was in like sixth grade. We've always had one and, uh, we don't have one now, which is incredibly sad, but, uh, Shakespeare, you're a great dog. Uh, we have, uh, Oh my God, turtles 73 saying can't watch live, but hoping both of you are well and you're feeling better. And also Xbox announcing scale bound soon. Ooh, ooh. well, there's one <laughs> thing you can always count on is this. One mention of Scalebound during these episodes, and this is that's that's the first one, and hopefully the last one, because I won't read another super chat with Scalebound in it unless it has like a hundred dollars attached to it, because I, I just I just won't Scalebound. This, the joke needs to just die. It just needs to be over. It's never over, bro. I know it never it never is going to be over. Scalebound, Scalebound is Schrodinger's game. It's the game that doesn't exist that also very very much exists every week. On the Xbox <laughs> 2, someone always brings it up. <laughs> Sin Vendetta, what's going on, buddy? He says, Rand, my deep and console for you. I went through the same, very same thing back in December with one of my dogs 13 years, and I know it's very hard to go through. Take the time you need. Good to have you back. Well, it's good to be back. You know, I was kind of a little bit... There was there was a thought in my mind today, I'm not going to lie. Maybe I should just cancel this show. Maybe I just... Mm. I need more time. But starting the show being with you guys talking to jazz and we're about to, you know, we're having, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good, you know, three hour, four hour show, wherever long this thing's going to be. And I'm probably just going to, you know, I'm just going to, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Not not, granted. I wish it was maybe like, uh, more exciting things to talk about in the world of Xbox, or at least like, Hey, Redfall is going to be amazing or, or the, the deal got approved or whatever. Uh, but some of it, obviously it sucks because it's like, well, Microsoft just spent a year and a half and it's basically just time wasted. You know, it's like just, they just, and I'm not going to begrudge them for, for chasing the deal because it was so huge and it would change things. But it's also like, Hey, Xbox fans, Microsoft just wasted a year and a half. How do you feel about that? You know what I mean? It's not like the best news. Uh, or the best, you know, situation to really actually want to talk about because, you know, it's over my pay grade. I don't really understand all this. Like, you can, we can read things that Hoaglaw says or Foss Patents or any of the people that are experts on Twitter, but all the experts were wrong. All the experts were like, hey, sort of after they got rid of the PlayStation SLC, it was like everybody was like, oh, the deal's done. Everybody was like, PlayStation's going to have to come crawling to the table and bend a knee to Phil and sign the little thing. And they didn't. And it's a good thing they didn't because, well, the CMA ended up blocking it anyways. I just sort of wish Mm. there was more, like, good news to talk about in the world of Xbox. You know, I don't know, man. I got to, I got to. Are you going to push back on it? You're going to push back? There's, there's, There's a good news aspect to all this drama. Okay. There is a good news aspect. We'll we'll get into it in more detail in a bit, but I'm actually like I'm. I said on Twitter the other day, like I'm actually feeling optimistic in general mm-hmm. at the minute. Yeah, but you but only give that... two shits. The only thing you care about is Blizzard. <laughs> That's the only. I know. I know. I know the one and only Mikey Barr is in chat. I don't know if he still is, but Mike should feel very proud because Jez only cares about one thing about the steel, and that was Blizzard, and he felt. <laughs> And he felt that Mike, that Blizzard needed Microsoft to become what they should be, but it seems like they're becoming really good, releasing quality games under Mike's leadership. And maybe they don't need Microsoft. So Jez told me earlier, I don't give a shit about this deal anymore because Blizzard's amazing. Those are his words. <laughs> don't let him dance around this. 
<laughs> don't let him say something different to you guys that he said to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I never cared about Call of Duty. Well, I think sure. everyone here, nobody here, thinks that I cared about Call of Duty. Yeah, true, but true. We'll we'll talk about we'll talk about some feelings about the ABK deal in a bit. But yeah. I don't think. Like even even like disregarding the whole Blizzard angle, I don't think it's as doom and gloom as people think it is. Uh, people, some people might think it is. Like a lot, a lot of people had sort of tied their faith in the platform to this deal, but I don't think that was necessary. If you if you like if you're worried about the platform as a result of this deal not going through, you really shouldn't be. And I'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Wait, actually, positive? There is, isn't doom and glooming. Yeah, there's no doom and gloom Xbox on this show. Xbox doom and gloom. I never do doom and gloom. What are you talking about? No, I'm I'm, I'm Mr. Positive. Yeah, I'm Mr. Sunshine, baby. Yeah, hundred percent. You, you, I'm, I'm you, Mr. Sunshine. Because that's apparently that's what's been going on recently, and I missed the boat on it because you know of what was happening. But there's been a lot of doom and glooming around. You know, there's been some doom. There's been yeah. a bit of doom, a little bit of gloom. Yeah, but um, I'm Mr. Positive recently. So okay, we'll, Mr. We'll positive. We'll see. We'll see. How, we'll see your positive takes on this a little bit later. Uh, Jay Rembert. It says, my condolences to you, Rand. Our White Sox sucks. They do suck, don't they? God, they were, like, really good a couple years ago, and they got bounced out of the playoffs, and then they just suck since. Uh, Who? My Chicago White Sox. My my baseball team. My baseball. Baseball. Huh? Yeah, I know. Your favorite. Um, I actually, like, as, as far as American sports go, baseball is probably my favorite one because it's the only one that's a little bit like cricket. Ooh. But whatever. We have a DB Cooper. I, I, I have fun playing baseball as a kid. He says, I can't stick around, but here's five dollars just to hear Jess say controversy. Rand, we love you, brother. Controversy. I love you too. It's controversy. Dude, I've I'm like I'm confused, man. I can't remember how I'm supposed to pronounce controversy. Is it controversy or controversy? I can't remember how British people pronounce it anymore because we use we use both pronunciations so interchangeably that I'm just really confused about it all nowadays. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we have achievement. Xbox should spend their sixty-nine billion on the devs of Vampire Survivors instead. Imagine this guy making an RPG. <laughs> well, you wouldn't I mean, need sixty-nine billion for that. You probably need a thousand bucks. <laughs> Maybe well, Rand, a couple hamburgers. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I, dude. I, I don't know because there was some Vampire Survivors news at the start of the show. Uh, there's a Netflix TV series coming about yeah. Vampire Survivors. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Uh, yeah, Lat- cool. You know, with with um with Super Mario Brothers approaching a billion dollars, I think it passed nine hundred million, and with Last of Us being a smash hit for HBO, you know, I you're gonna see probably more and more as Hollywood turns to you know video games as something uh, as an attraction to draw uh, customers, right? So it's unfortunate that Halo se- Halo Season One was the way it was, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, we do have what a Gears movie, a Gears animated show, a grounded show. There's a Fallout TV show. PlayStation's doing a Horizon TV show and a God of War show. The teaser trailer just ro- dropped for Twisted Metal. I would imagine there's going to be more things, especially for They're bigger doing IPs. A Twisted Metal show, yeah, and it's coming. It's isn't that a racing game? Uh, it no, it's like confused. it's a demolition game. It was like a demolition. It wasn't really racing. It was just demolition. Dog demolition. Dog. Yeah, you just destroyed. I don't know. I watched the teaser trailer. I kind of thought it was. I was just like, this doesn't look good. And it's on Peacock, which you know means probably it's on Peacock, probably because it's not good. Uh, but you know, I think I think Dude, how, what? How dare you? Twin Peaks season three was on Peacock, and that was awesome. You know so. It's uh yeah, I bet you isn't there supposed to be a Diablo show? I remember something about a Diablo show. Uh, I that rings a bell. There should pro- the, so I'm, I can't keep track of them. You know, I'm going to I'm going to actually commission that article. I'm going to have I'm going to have someone at Windows Central write here's a list of all the video game TV shows currently in production. I think that would be a that would be a cool reference article to have. Uh we have Ralph Wiggum in the super chat saying we love you, Rand. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you guys all for being here. It means a lot. Uh, Max Coleman says, I'm from Argentina. One PlayStation game costs half a basic salary. Game Pass is like 2%. Why does the UK decide for me? It's, it is ridiculous, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. ridic- it is so ridiculous. But mm-hmm. we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, oh, my brother, Gaming Forte, member for 30 months. So, so sorry, Rand. Been working like crazy and haven't been on Twitter. I feel, 
I feel like a bad friend, but I'm truly sorry for your loss. I'll check on you later. Yeah, I was expecting a phone call from, from Forte, but but nothing, bro. Nothing. No phone calls, no nothing. He's been too, been too busy to check in on his buddy Randall Thor. <laughs> That's fine, though. Um, let's see what else we got. We have uh, Randy G. Jez, do you... Th- do you think this is rising cost of games have to do with the push for higher graphics and animations? Now publishers can't make cheaper games because the bar has been raised by PlayStation First Party? You know, I actually think it's it's due to demand and supp- supply and demand. I think like the demand for high quality experienced developers has gotten so high that developers can negotiate like an exponentially higher salary, you know. And as they should at the end of the day. But now what you're getting now is a sort of, you're getting a sort of a conflict of interest between how much developers should be paid versus shareholder profits and dividends or whatever. So like the publisher is looking for ways to cut corners so it can squeeze out some juice from proceedings. And one of the ways they're doing that is like maybe giving developers not as much time as they need not giving them as many developers as they need and maybe sort of cutting corners in other ways. QA probably getting cut corners a lot in the name of maximizing profits at the end of the day. I mean, at the end of the day, it's maximizing profits that's causing all this stuff that's going on. And um, I think quality assurance is suffering and and uh, the the rising cost is, you know, because there's not enough developers out there that can deliver the kind of games that people want, you know? So, you know, well, if you've got kids, send them to game dev school. <laughs> it's because, like, every, it seems like everybody wants, or at least developers think, you have to provide a game that has, uh, like, is really lengthy, right? And all these games are just bigger. They're more intricate. They're more detailed. Everything's got to be 4K, Right. And you gotta you gotta push the visual boundaries so everything takes advantage of your everyone's big new 4K televisions. It looks good, right? And it's like that all requires more developers, you know, more artists, more animators to do all these things because that's what people expect now. Because the games that don't have those things, they get you know they get blasted in reviews and they don't sell as well, right? And then when a game comes out that is not as uh, good looking as the others, or in, is it? Or it doesn't have a thirty hour open world with all these quests, and it's like you you hear it all the time. Hey, this game is sixty bucks, but it's eight hours long. And people are like, oh, it's, it's too short, right? It it's really weird how and not I, maybe it didn't happen over a short t- frame of time, but moving from like three sixty to Xbox One to the Xbox Series X. You know, the PS3, PS4, PS5 gen. People started to value, I think, longevity over like a... Um, that was the Skyrim effect. A lin- a, like a linear, shorter experience. Where it was like, I can get more from my money uh, if this game lasts me 30 to 80 hours versus a game that's 8 to eight to 12, right? Mm. So developers started chasing that, but because of that you need more you need to hire more people you, you, you know the games take longer to make right and and everybody wants like these incredible games but then when you get games that don't do it people are like oh look how ugly that game looks or why is this game only $40 I hear it all the time with indie games ooh it's 30 bucks there must be something wrong with it like people have this mindset that if it's not full price then there has to be a problem right it, it's it's kind of like you know, I think even um, the former head of PlayStation talked about this. Um, Sean Layden, he <clears> talked <throat> about like maybe the unsustainability of AAA gaming. He talked about how you like to see more smaller experiences uh, actually re-enter the market that are actually shorter. But everybody's chasing it. They see God of War Ragnarok and it's 40-hour length and they see it sold X millions of dollars, right? You see Hogwarts Legacy, uh, you know, that was... 20 to 30 hours or whatever that sells 20 million copies. And it's like, everybody looks at that and be like, we want that. 
we want that return. We want to sell those many copies. You look at Elden Ring, same thing. So that's, you know, this industry is full of copycats. People look at Diablo 4. Diablo 4 is going to make a shit ton of money. And it's like, it's going to, people are going to play it for hundreds of hours. And they're like, that's what people want because that's what people gravitate to. So that's what we have to provide them. But to do that, it's it costs so much money. And not everything's going to hit because there's, there's like the whole market is, there's not, the the market isn't really growing. It's still it's it's very stagnant, you know, from one generation to the next. And it's know. it's a strange industry. It's a really strange industry because it's not like the movie industry where like you know, the the only the only the only thing the players losing is like you know two hours of their time. If you buy if you buy a shitty movie, you go to you go to the movie theater and you watch a shitty movie. It's no big deal because maybe you wait you wasted ninety ninety minutes of your life and maybe you hung out with some friends and it wasn't actually that big of a problem. Video games, it's like people buy them for a variety of different reasons, and <clears throat> like even traditional indicators. Like I've been told by someone in the industry that one of the indicators for success on Xbox Game Pass is literally Metacritic. If a game game's got like a high rating on Metacritic, chances are that it's gonna do well on Xbox Game Pass. You know, but that doesn't always work out when it comes to sales. Cause like there are games that review well, that end up just not selling that well. And you hear Square Enix talk about this all the time. It's like, Oh, we, we missed our sales projections with this game. We missed our sales projections with that game. Like Tomb Raider is a pretty good example. Well, Tomb Raider games review pretty well, but according to Square Enix, not enough people bought them. You know, there's something fundamentally wrong about this. And I don't feel fully qualified to, to talk about some of this stuff. Cause I'm not in the business, but, I do agree with Sean Layden. I wish there was like more of a market for these sort of smaller experiences. Like I had um, a game hit Game Pass this past week called, I think it's, it was called Homestead Arcana. Or, uh, did you see this game yeah. at all? You, yeah. So so Homestead Arca- Arcana or Arcana, I don't, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's kind of like, it's one of those cozy games, like a bit of, you know, build a village or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what it is, to be quite honest with you. But, but <clears throat> we, uh, you know, publishers were reaching out and saying, can you review this this indie game for us? You know, and essentially give it some coverage. And I'm just sitting there like, I know this article won't get any clicks, right? So I could either like have one of our writers dedicate however many hours of time to reviewing this game, or I can have them like write a bunch of news posts, which I know will get clicks, you know? At the end of the day, it's sort of like, it just... It, boils down to that sort of mentality and the games that just don't get attention for whatever reason don't get press and then if they don't get press they don't get attention it's like it's like a weird vicious cycle i don't know it's like someone could write a thesis on what's going wrong with with triple a and like all this kind of stuff at the minute but all these big publishers they're all competing for the the, the same a piece of the a static pie you know the same, the same static pie. And uh, it's tough, man. It's tough. Indeed. Uh, we have J Mo Money saying, sending you all the bone cream, Rand. Love you, bud. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, let's see if there's any more. We have uh, one STN 15th. Uh, am I the only Xbox fan that's super concerned about the future of Xbox? Xbox may end up with less market share this generation than Xbox One. That's concerning. Mm. I mean, we're going to talk about the future of Xbox as part of the show, like in a, in a deeper conversation. But the fact that Xbox has 120 million monthly active users suggests to me that they're going to be okay. You know, market share market share in consoles ain't everything you know and you can you can look at tencent and riot for an example of that riot doesn't put any of their games on console and they have they have roughly around the same i think they have about 120 million monthly active users as well you know and that and tencent's the biggest they're the biggest you know they don't make hardware they only have monthly active users so microsoft's kind of chasing that model a little bit um but they they do want to sell hardware and have hardware on the side but the fact that they also have windows kind of means that xbox is going to be safe no matter what you know i think xbox will be take on different forms down the line but there's always going to be a home console that you can buy an xbox you can buy 
that you know run Xbox games. You know, maybe they won't have the biggest market share. Maybe more of their money will come from mobile or PC. But I don't think Microsoft's going to walk away from console because at the end of the day, the console is what powers the cloud. And if cloud is indeed the future, then they need to keep making consoles. So, you know, they're kind of clever by anchoring console in the cloud that way. But yeah, we'll talk about that in more detail yeah. in a bit. Randy G says, my condolences to you, Rand. Thank you. Uh, Injury Cold says, watching Boomstick, and he mentioned Matt to Mag that Xbox has put some acquisitions on hold because of the ABK deal. Jez, can you share anything? I can't share who exactly. I do know of a couple, actually, that were that were completely fell through because of ABK. Um, I don't, I don't want to say who, because, you know, A... I'm not 100% certain yet. I'm sort of like 80% certain. And B, um, everyone would be really salty. <laughs> and I don't want in, to, I don't want to be the good, messenger bad, for that. In a good way or a bad way? In a bad way, probably. In a bad but, way because it didn't go through or a bad way a ba- because... In a bad way because it, people would have wanted it. People oh. would have wanted that to happen. So, um, so yeah, some deals, some deals didn't happen because of ABK. And... Um, but the, it's like Rand said earlier, you can't begrudge Microsoft for going after ABK because ABK would have been game changing. Having Call of Duty and Game Pass would have been game changing. Ha- having all this stuff would have been completely game changing. So they had to do it. They had an opportunity to go for this and they had to take it. Um, so it's just kind of, you know, sometimes you, you, you play to win and sometimes you lose, you know, and that's, that's what happened here. But it's not, it's not over. It's not doom and gloom. Yeah, Bone Slave says put one billion into each studio is what they need to do. Well, I mean that's not gonna happen. Come on now. They've invested. Um, they've invested quite a lot of money in some studios. You sure, know, to the but tune I mean, of hundreds of millions. Actually. But a billion dollars though, into like each one of the studios. I mean, as much as I would like that, I mean that that doesn't seem to really really be feasible, right? I mean, there's, there's this whole thing as well. Sometimes you just can't throw money at a problem. You know, like, I mean, Sony themselves are talking about how, like, how expensive game dev is getting. You know, you throw, you throw, money, you throw money at a dev to hire more devs, right? That just sort of, again, it sort of increases your costs. And then you have to start thinking about, like, okay, did this, I don't know, say, say double A game. Say Microsoft's making a double A game and you're just throwing a billion dollars at the studio. First game that, that studio makes will probably still be a double A game because the team has to like you know integrate with each other, learn the technology and all that kind of stuff. Just just throwing a billion dollars at a studio doesn't result in an instant triple A game. So like you're investing a billion dollars for like what the next five, six, ten years, and by which time like all the Xbox fans are going to be really salty and like oh my god, invested a billion dollars in the studio and like six years later we still don't have a triple A game out of it. We're seeing that play out right now with Bethesda t- to some degree. Um, so sometimes just throwing money at the problem ain't, ain't going to fix it. The best, the best way forward for Microsoft is acquisitions. But as we've seen from regulators, even that's fraught with problems. So I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Um, let's see what else I'm looking at. I, I did miss some things. Web Dave, Outbreak Gamers, he's saying, showing support for our favorite podcasters. Thank you. Web Dave Achievement says, I'm sorry for your lost ram pets or kids. Uh, Face 23 BK and Y says, instead of wasting time and money on the ABK deal, why don't Microsoft invest that money on their studios they already have, which is more than Sony and Nintendo have, and they need to fix their management. My condolences, Rand. And yeah, we kind of touched on that. But one thing I do agree with there is that Microsoft's processes for oversight aren't good. I think they need to revamp some of this stuff because... You know, the the fact that you've got uh, someone sent, I posted on Twitter the other day, but someone sent me uh, a picture of um, a retail box. <laughs> Mike's trolling me in the chat. Jez is brutal to me. In his uh, what do you mean brutal? You basically like write love letters to, to Diablo. <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean? I've never I seen you know. be so happy and you, you, you basically have no, it's like, you you have Xbox stuff and you write these Xbox articles, yeah, I've, and, I've and pr- you'll I've been... criticize them. But everything about Blizzard's like they're so amazing. Diablo's the best. 
Overwatch Dude, is so about? good. Why is Blizzard the <laughs> best company in the world? What do you mean you're... Mike, I don't know if you're reading those articles. Jez, Jez basically writes poems to how good Blizzard is. Nah, I, I've been I, I've been super critical of Blizzard for the last few in the, in years. The, maybe right? in so the I'm past, coming, I'm coming but out. not recently. I mean, I literally have a photograph in the back end of Bobby Kotick with with devil horns on it. That's like every time I'm like looking for an, a picture of Activision Blizzard for an article, this like this like bad Photoshop of Bobby Kotick with devil horns pops up from an article I wrote years ago about Activision destroying Blizzard, but hey, they're, they're doing pretty good lately. Like, I'm, you know, Diablo, pretty damn good. Dragonfight, pretty damn good. I'm playing Overwatch right now, you know, and I'm, I'm enjoying the battle passes. So, hey, maybe uh, maybe Blizzard doesn't need Microsoft after all, you know. <laughs> but I don't know. It's uh, part of a bigger conversation, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got what you wanted. You you always said you're a Blizzard fanboy, so whatever. Well, at the end of the day, Mike still need Mike still needs to do two things for me: a, revive Heroes of the Storm, and b, Starcraft three. Starcraft three. The, the two. Mm. Yeah, the two. The two. The two things that Mike needs to still do for me, and that'd be great if it could if it could just sort that out. Heroes of the Storm, bring it to mobiles. Um, Pokemon proved that mobas can work on mobile uh, mobile phones so yeah heroes of storm mobile bring it to consoles as well because there's pretty much no ma- there's pretty much no competition from uh, a moba on console so sort that out and uh yeah and give me starcraft 3 that'd be great mike says jez come to campus yeah that's that's, that's in the plan I, I i it's a dream you know it's a dream of mine to go to blizzcon and uh i'm gonna make it happen i'm gonna make it happen Oh, I just need to know know when it is. I can is. only I can I can I can already foresee all the fluff pieces at once you go to <laughs> go to the campus. Dude, I'm gonna be oozing fluff. I'm gonna Jesus. be I'm gonna be walking by the fluff. I'm gonna cosplay, man. I'll go to BlizzCon in full blown cosplay. Mm-hmm. Who should I cosplay at BlizzCon? Ah, I don't know. Tracer. I don't know. No, <laughs> you you'd be you'd be a good t- Trollborn. You'd be a good Trollborn, or, or you know the dude Torbjorn. from Torbjorn. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, Torbjorn. I could do Torbjorn. You could do yeah. that. You're short yeah, and you got beard. a beard. You could do that. Hundred percent. Yeah, sh- shit. You're right. I could do. Torbjorn. You could. Maybe I will. Maybe I yeah. will do Torbjorn. I'll do pirate Torbjorn. His pirate skin or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. We have Elijah Vasquez member for seven months. I hope hope you bro- hope your brothers are doing better. Appreciate all of what you both do. Thank you uh panda man 77 halo master chief on steam deck is amazing will xbox have further integration into the deck redfall is verified for steam deck but i have to repurchase um will they have further integration into the deck i don't know uh but that ross ally that's supposed to be coming out next month on may 11th for like 700 bucks um that'll probably have better Dude, integration um, uh than than the steam deck does if you're probably an xbox fan i think right yeah i mean the the roger alloy it's 700 dollars for the high-end model and they've got they've got two different models with two different chips so maybe you're looking at i don't know maybe 500 if we're lucky for the the lower end model still m- big performance games or gains over the steam deck at least but remains to be seen what kind of battery life that thing's going to get with uh, with all those chips in it. So we'll have to wait and see. I am going to buy one though. I've decided I'm going to buy one. I am I am fully on the Windows handheld trend now. Like after putting Windows on my Steam Deck, absolutely love it. And uh, I'm totally going to get a Rog Ally. I wish it was black though. Yeah. I hate white tech. It looks so tacky. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a mobile person, so I'm probably not going to get any of those things honestly even if xbox were to make a mobile device i probably wouldn't care either i just that's not that's something that interests me dude honestly me neither but my girlfriend keeps taking over the tv yeah i mean i guess that's a problem you know (laughs) maybe if i ever get a girlfriend and she's watching tv i could be like well where's my xbox handheld so i can play some games yeah uh, Ninja Buckle <laughs> says, any word on Baldur's Gate 3? Uh, there hasn't been anything since they revealed that game and then they came out and said they couldn't get it running on the Xbox or to a, a, a state they, they were happy with because of split-screen co-op. So uh, maybe it will come later, but nothing since then, at least that I'm aware of. 
uh, Sith Lord, member for three months, says, Sorry, it's been a bad week for everyone. Hopefully next month things can turn around with good news. Here is to a better May. Yes. Uh, Jay Rembert. Microsoft announced that they're making their own chips. Other than the surfaces, what else does Microsoft make or will make? Xbox is here to stay. That's a Jez question because I don't care about anything else Microsoft does except for Xbox. So other than the surfaces, what would they be using these chips for, Jez? AI, baby. AI. I mean, the chips, AI, the chips are, of course. Yeah, the, the chips are only going to be used for servers. So, like, right, right now, to do, to do like AI processing, they use Nvidia. I think they're called A100 GPUs. They're kind of like their server grade GPUs for handling things like AI specifically. I, I, I actually don't know if you can game on them. You probably can, but it's probably like overkill. I, I don't know. That's, that's an interesting thought. But anyway, uh, Microsoft wants to make their own versions of that because NVIDIA's chips are expensive, boys. And Microsoft probably thinks, you know what, if we made our own chips, we'd probably save a load of money. And this AI stuff's not going away, probably going to change the world. So it's a pretty pretty smart move by them to start producing their own chips. They've done some of their own chips for Surface, um, but you know they weren't that successful, I think. So I don't think you're going to start seeing Xbox powered by Microsoft's own chips. I really doubt that. This is just all for servers and stuff. But who knows, man? Who knows? Who knows? Indeed. We have Melissa and Alex's family. He says, uh, they say, be petty. Buy exclusive rights to COD. Yeah, everybody's got this whole scenario of like, all right, well, the ABK deal, it may be over. So what are you going to do? And you have to do X, Y, or Z. You just spend all that money and buy up every... I've seen people say, just just literally spend that money and buy up every third-party exclusive and make them all timed. Dry out PlayStation. You know, like, just make everything timed <laughs> buy, exclusive. Buy everything. You know, spend... And it's like, I mean... I mean, that's what... Re- that's literally what regulators told them to do. Man. I mean, yeah. That's like, literally- the CMA literally said, maybe you should do that. Which is funny, because the CMA is like, is like, hey, maybe you should make deals. So, basically, they're telling... It's it's interesting that they blocked over over cloud, right? Uh, because they were... They, they had to protect this nascent market. Through, uh, you know, and it's like, okay, whatever... But then they basically said, hey, maybe you should strike deals and do deals. It's just like they're basically telling Microsoft, hey, maybe you should just strike a deal with Call of Duty to put Call of Duty only on xCloud and nowhere else. And like they'd be more okay with that, which would stifle competition because Call of Duty would only be on xCloud rather than the passing the deal and then giving Call of Duty to all these, uh, you know, um, these cloud gaming companies spreading the wealth, so to speak. Uh, so, like, they're basically saying they'd rather have that, where it's like, hey, make the deal, make it exclusive, and we're perfectly fine. But no, you can't own it. It's it's very odd. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll talk a, a little bit uh, about it more. Like, honestly, like I haven't been reading too much up on all this uh, because there's just so much to read on, and it's just like I'm, as I have always said. I've been over the whole ABK thing. Um, and it's kind of like now it's just going to drag on for another year. And it's just like, Oh my God, really? Are we really just going to have to talk about this every single week for, for the next like foreseeable future? Cause if so, I'm done. Like, it'll be like, Hey, what happened this week? And, 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 and the drama and just move on from there because like I'm at my wits end. Like it's one thing to make fun of like Jim Ryan and the comments Sony made because and at, 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 you know at the end of the day, Sony and what they were saying were completely irrelevant to this whole decision, right? Everybody was so hyper focused on Call of Duty and hyper focused on what PlayStation was saying that at the end of the day, none of it mattered. What PlayStation said didn't matter. What's what at all? It was just all kind of like a smokescreen. Dude. For I wouldn't be I wouldn't be so sure about that because like well, literally I mean at least the, the, on the console the, that whole console like harm thing right that well that the, the, C- CMA, the CMA the CMA was literally on Sky News talking about PlayStation again today were they yes so like that their assertions that PlayStation like they weren't concerned about the console market was kind of like w- really though. I don't, there's something fishy going on now with some of this shit, but oh well, we're going to talk about that. Should we just talk about it now? Because we've been talking about nah, it anyway. We still got more things to, to 
Yeah, so I, I don't want to miss any of these things. All right, all right. Uh, we have, let's see, Mr. Two Opinionated. Making third-party exclusive deals like the 360 would help cover for the way to first party to produce. Look at the PS5 this year, literally. Very true. Uh, that that uh, A lot of people have been asking for that. You, you aren't wrong on that one. Uh, we have uh, Chaos Might. Jez, make sure to wear a red shirt in one of the panels. <laughs> make sure oh, dear. You, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you 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 don't you probably won't get I, that. Yeah, I, I don't understand. What does that mean? That's World of Warcraft memory. I no, think I don't care about World of Warcraft. I'm sorry. You can't say that with Mike here. I, it doesn't is. matter. Mike knows. I couldn't <laughs> care less about World of Warcraft. I've banned World That's of Warcraft so talk in this podcast because half the no, time, Jez is like, work, "Hey, what are you what are you playing this week?" And Jez will be World of Warcraft. Be like, we're not talking about it because nobody wants to hear. Anybody talk about World of Warcraft unless you're like Asmongold or somebody? Bro, that's that's mean, bro. I'm that's sorry. Just that's, that's just the way it is. That's just, you're telling me no one wants to hear me talk about it? They no. don't want to hear Asmongold talk no, about it? No, they don't want to hear you talk about World of oh, Warcraft. Man. Everybody's oh, basically just falls. It's, it's the same thing that happens when you talk about <laughs> VR. Everybody just falls asleep or changes the channel. Nobody wants to talk. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear World of Warcraft. Get out of here. Bro. That's just that's just shocking. So mean. Yeah. Tom but it's kind of like you when you start talking about that bloody book thing. You hey, like. you know What's what? This is this is my channel. I'll talk about whatever I goddamn want to talk about. Yeah, but it's my show yeah, well, as well. Well, excuse you. Did you I, I have to listen, what? I have to listen to you talk about what's it called? I can't remember. What do you mean? That what's thing, you, you don't even we don't you book, don't even know. That book, oh, like. oh, the books, the Wheel of Time. That's the one, Wheel yeah. of Time. Yeah. I have to listen to you talk about that. Uh, and literally nobody cares about books. Guess what? Nobody. I care. And guess what? <laughs> this is my YouTube channel. And guess what? This is my <laughs> podcast. So I'll talk about what I want. You know what? Screw it. This podcast is now a no. booktube podcast. From now no, on, we're only no, going to be talking about no. books. So no. if you haven't read any books, get out of here. This is now... The this Holy is now crap. the wheel the wheel of time two. I'm changing the name. Oh my god, man! We're we're talking Please about no. fantasy, science fiction, and horror. Ugh. And you can't no. stop me. There's nothing you can do. I can I can I can stop you by mentioning the fact Mike just dropped twelve months of World of Warcraft Ooh. in the chat. Ooh. Damn, twelve months. So yeah, Mike Mike has just converted someone to the glory of World of Warcraft. Make sure you roll horde though, otherwise bad bad times will happen. Nobody plays Alliance. Just cast all about WoW. Yeah, I'm 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 kind of on a, a WoW sabbatical at the moment. I'm waiting for the new patch to drop. Ten point one, baby. We're gonna we going to new raid, new new stuff, new content. No service game delivers like World of Warcraft Rand. None mm. of them. None of them deliver like World of Warcraft. But anyway. Well, I'm, ha uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> I'm happy that you're enjoying World of Warcraft so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank Tom Legg says, "Have you guys seen Chat GPT mod for Skyrim? It's rough right now, but it's a cool. Look at what could happen in games in the future. What's that all about?" Oh yeah, dude. So someone someone integrated Chat GPT into Skyrim. So like some of the random NPCs that aren't that don't really have much dialogue and stuff. They they sort of chat gpt just makes them you can have whole conversations with just random npcs now and they they say like relevant stuff relevant to where they are in the story and all this kind of stuff because it knows somehow it knows chat gpt knows from like reading game facts and stuff the entire lore of skyrim and the plot so like it, it just can generate magical npcs that actually make sense another thing that it can do um I've noticed that, like, this isn't even a mod. This is, like, an actual game doing this. Galactic Civilizations from Stardock has something in, in their new game called Alien GPT, where, like, some of the random events and the, the NPCs that you meet in that, because it's a 4X strategy game, that's also powered by ChatGPT. So it's, it's happening, man. ChatGPT in games, it's happening. It's coming. It's coming soon, baby. And I just wonder, like... Oh, and uh, actually, I will say, I will uh, make a note. Microsoft is also experimenting right now with ChatGPT in some of their games. So, Really? Yes, they are. Well, I mean, that does make sense. They've talked about AI before. 
Uh, you know, Matt yes. Booty talked about AI helping it developments, you know, speed it up and stuff. And it, it really does seem that Microsoft is really all like down in chat GPT. How, how, how's chat GPT doing for them? Like in, 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 in the search stuff, you know, anything well, about, like ver- I, their battle versus Google and everything? Well, I don't know, actually. I, I will. The, the only thing I can say that is for the first time in Windows Central history, I've been at Bing as being the primary driver of traffic on some articles. I've never seen that in my life. It's always been Google since forever. Google's the number one driver of traffic, or maybe sometimes Twitter if something goes really viral. Sometimes Reddit if something gets really upvoted. But now I've started seeing Bing in our analytics. So it must be doing something. I never thought I'd see the day where Bing was relevant, but here we are. Crazier things can happen. Yeah. You know, like Microsoft trying to buy Blizzard. That, yeah, crazier <laughs> things can happen. Windows phones never come back though. So Ugh. I'm sorry, Jess. I had I, I had to get the twist the knife in there. We got a Dead Planet saying a lot of <laughs> other channels say there's no way Hellblade 2 comes out until at least 2024, and that Avowed is the end of the year 2024. Can you guys respond? Well, you don't I really mean, you don't really have a maybe. lot of you don't really have a lot of uh time left to wait to really find out. Because a month from now, well, a little bit over a month, you're going to have the Xbox Game Showcase on June 11th, right? Yes. And Redfall will be out by then. Minecraft Legends will be out. Starfield, they have the Starfield Direct right after it. So, like, Starfield's not going to be at the show. Redfall's not going to be at So, they, they, need some, they need new stuff, right? Forza will be there because they need to announce the release date. Even though they did just release a new trailer about all the accessible... They call it the most accessible Forza, right? Like, how... Uh, they had to blind gamer play it and how, uh, you know, they can help them with all the accessibility options to actually have them enjoy and play Forza. It was a really good trailer, but it'll be there. I haven't watched that yet, but I did, a lot of people said that it was a really cool trailer. So. Yeah, but that, they'll have to announce the release date, probably October-ish. A lot of people are thinking, all right, well, what's next? Because that's the question you, a lot of people have is Xbox... Sh- Revealed a lot of games in 2020, and virtually all of them have no release dates. Nobody knows, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of games that Xbox is working on, but nobody knows when they're coming out. And, well, the fact that you were relying the last two E3s on Redfall and Starfield, those were your big games, you can't show them again because one's going to be out next week and the other has its own show. So now you actually have to dive deep into what Xbox Game Studio is working, you know? And Hellblade 2 was the first game they revealed in 2019. You know, is that ready for this year? Could it be ready for this year? You know, they're doing dev diaries and stuff. Avowed, another game, uh, you know, that... I mean, hell, I remember a couple years ago, it wasn't like, oh, you see more of Avowed, and then supposedly, because of a miscommunication, they revealed Outer Worlds 2 instead of Avowed. Or something. That's so weird to me. How do you miss? I don't know. How but does a miscommunication lead to a game reveal? I, I that don't is know. So strange to me. I don't know. But either way, so it's like Xbox is. I don't think they'll stick. I don't think they'll do the twelve month thing again because I think that was no. just blew up in their face. It was you know they wanted to do it because they their big games were delayed and it was like a cute PR win. Like oh you can play all this stuff in the next twelve months. Didn't pan out exactly the way they hoped it would. So, yeah, they're going to have to come out and they're going to have to give, maybe not necessarily release dates, but, hey, Hellblade 2 is coming 2024 or it's coming this holiday. Avowed is coming 2024 or whatever. Because, like, yeah, that's what's next. What's next is, like, people are going to be like, what is going to come out in 2024? And that is the question that Microsoft is going to be answering, uh, hopefully, because, I mean, the last few weeks... It's been really nothing but bad PR uh, around Xbox. Really since, I don't know, the it seems like Redfall 30 Frames discussion or reveal really started this snowball of just kind of bad mm. Xbox news kind of just rolling down the hill, picking up steam, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Stories started coming out left and right, and then it all kind of culminates in ABK getting blocked. And so people... I've gotten messages on my Xbox where people are like I've lost complete hope in 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 an Xbox rand you know talk me off the edge and I'm like what what 
talk you off the edge. I'm like, I'm Microsoft doesn't pay me anything. I'm not their pe- I'm not here to talk people off the edge uh, about any of this stuff. I'm here to just give my opinions about things. Uh, it, it's funny when people come to me and say that, be like, what should I do? Should I sell my Xbox? I don't know. What do you think you should do? What do you, are they offering you what you wanted? Are you feel like you're getting your money's worth? I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know how to respond to those messages. It's, you know, like I don't work for Microsoft, so I, I don't know how I should respond to somebody saying like, convince me not to sell my Xbox. And I've literally got that message like two days ago on my Xbox. I was like, really down on Xbox Rand. It seems like they can't do anything right. I'm thinking about selling it. Convince me not to. And I'm like, one, I don't care if you do. So like, <laughs> two, like, I don't know much more than you do. You know, all I can say is like, hey, I think it's going to be really good until, you know, it, all this stuff pans out or the games come out and they're, they're, they're not good. It'd be like, well, I was wrong. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, Microsoft's going to have to show people and tell people, this is why you should be really excited about Xbox. Look at these games that we got coming this year. Yeah. Look at these games that are hitting game pass on day one next year. We know that, you know, games have taken a while, uh, and the games that we put out recently aren't the triple a bangers that people expect, but this is the future. And it gives you a look. Of like, oh man, look at Hellblade and how amazing it is. Look at, look, oh, Vow looks so cool. Perfect Dark looks incredible. Like, you know, or, or or like, I don't know what else they could possibly, I mean, there, there's so many things they could show. I don't know what they will show. But, you know, a lot of people do feel that they need to hit this out of the park. Um, you know, I don't know, if, uh, you know, people always bring up like, well, it, it's make or to break it. It's like, people always say that every single year, but. I mean, I don't know when Hellblade 2 is coming out. I don't know when Avowed is coming out. I assume Avowed is next year. Because uh, it certainly isn't this year. Uh, so I would imagine Avowed is maybe... Best guess, early 2024. But more realistically, probably the end of 2024. Hellblade 2? I mean, Jez said on the show recently that he'd put money on it being this year. But... I mean, we just saw a a Jedi Fallen Order get delayed a month and it still comes out and uh, you know it has a whole bunch of problems it seems like AAA gaming is just running to this issue where they release games that are basically broken because they can't delay things anymore and it's just like hey that's all right we'll patch it later it's the only like industry where they sell you a product (laughs) that really isn't up to stuff. Imagine if you went and bought a car, but the car was sputtering as it, and as you left like the dealership, but that's okay. The car will get better after 500 miles. Uh, you know, like a video game, like I I bought Jedi, I bought Jedi survivor last night because I, I, the game I was looking forward to the most. And then I see all these, like, I see all the reviews, 86, way better than the first one. I'm like, hell yeah, we're getting that, we're getting the jump that I, that I want, right? Like we're, you know, that, that uncharted to uncharted two jump or that gears one to gears two jump where like the, you have a really incredible, a really, really damn good first game. But then the sequel, they learn, they, they learn from all the things that went wrong with the first one. They listen to fan feedback and things that can be improved. And then the second one comes out and it's so much better than the first one in every way. And it's like, yes, we're going to get that with the star Wars game. That's what I'm hoping we're going to get with Hellblade two, right? Um, and then it's like, oh, but it's got performance problems on every and every console and like every mode. And I'm just like, oh, what? But you already delayed it a month, and you still like have problems. And it's like, oh man, like you should have delayed it again, you know. And I really don't want to hear like next week. You know, I'm not playing Redfall because I'm waiting for 60 frames. But you know, hopefully Redfall comes out and it, it bucks this trend of like broken games at launch, even though recently dead Island two came out and was pretty goddamn solid all the way through. <laughs> um, I, I really hope R- Redfall is just, all right, Redfall works. There's no outside of the 30 frames, like console version is great. PC version is great. Instead of just, Hey, g- give us 70 bucks and the game might be okay. Two weeks from now, you know, it's like, like Oh, really? Are we going through this shit again? Uh, I, that's like the worst thing about modern gaming is the fact that 
they'll just be like, ah, ship it. We'll fix it later. So then people, you know, and, and for, uh, and if you're not on steam, it's can be difficult sometimes to get a refund, right? Almost virtually impossible on PlayStation, a little bit easier on Xbox, but it's not like a slam dunk, you know, uh, I don't know. It feels grimy. It feels grimy jazz that they do this. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're talking about it earlier. It's, and it was funny you 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 were using the car analogy like what if you were going through a car and things are sputtering and whatever um and uh you know th- that that that's a reality that could happen the more the more digitized cars get and like i you know most a lot of these modern cars they don't even have they don't even have physical interfaces anymore they've just got tablets with like all digital interfaces you know Car cars get updated now, so we probably will get to a situation where like there'll be cars that come out where it's like, oh yeah, we'll just patch it in later. The reason this keeps happening is because people keep buying them, man. People keep buying them, and regardless of, um, you know, Digital Foundry can go over a game with a fine tooth comb and be like, oh, there's a, there's like a, you lose five frames here and ten frames there, but the the fact of the matter is. And this is completely honest and true. And, you know, I've been given data that backs this up. Most people just don't care or don't notice. Mm. They're, willing to, they're willing to put up with it. They're willing to put up with 30 frames. You know, I mean, look at, look, at Ninte- look at Pokemon on the Nintendo Switch, right? Like the last two Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch ran, ran like ass. And they always ran like ass. There was n- no amount of patches could make those games run better. Because the Switch just isn't capable of, of you know, running an open world game that well. It just isn't capable of it, you know? And um, generally speaking, at least. And uh, despite that, they still go on to sell tens of millions of copies. You know, they're some of the most sold through games of all time. Even though they run like ass. And it's because most people just don't care. Most people just don't care. They'll just put up with it. They'll just put up with the, the, the friend drops or whatever. Um, I haven't played Jedi Survivor myself yet. I do have it. And I do have it installed. I haven't fired it up yet. And one of the reasons for that is because I haven't finished the first one. I kind of feel like I should finish that one first, maybe, possibly, probably. Um, so as soon as I finish Persona, I'm moving on to Jedi. So never, order. never. Huh. But I, dude, I put 40 hours into Persona. Do you really think I'm going to drop it now? 40 damn hours. You got bro. like 60, 70 more to go, apparently. Well, more than that, because yeah. I... Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the the extra content that I did with the Royal Edition or whatever no, it's the, called. The but. Royal Edition. Ro- Roy- the Royal yeah. Persona because it's Persona Five Royal, right? Which has like a bunch of extra content. And I'm gonna do all that shit as well. So like, I'm gonna be playing that shit for like a million hours, bro. But yeah. I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. I'm. If it was a game that I was hating, like you and Pokemon, then you mm-hmm. know it'd be a different kettle of fish. But dude, I am actually really, really enjoying it. Uh, we have a member chat here, 15 months from Andy Hart. Very sorry to hear about Shakespeare. Also, the CMA, a very bad decision. Yeah. Um, make sure, if you guys are enjoying the show, hit that like button and please subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, talk a little bit about games we've been playing, Jez. Uh, I finished Dead Island 2. Well, I finished Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, but I talked at length about my thoughts about Ghostwire Tokyo before. So I'll just briefly re-mention them. I really ended up enjoying Ghostwire Tokyo. However, the more I played, eventually, like with any open world game, and you'll hear me repeat this with Dead Island too, I it's sort of like the repetition of open world. You got fatigued. You get fatigued yeah. after X amount of time, and I think it sort of hit that uh, towards the end of Chapter Three, Chapter Four. But for the most part, I was really impressed right, with right, Go- right. Ghostwire Tokyo. <laughs> I was really impressed. I really enjoyed the combat. I liked the style. I liked the city. Um, I thought it, I, I, I just really had a good time playing it. Um, yeah, I actually like the first time I played Ghost War, I played it on PC and it was in a really rough state. Like I, I don't have the worst PC in the world, especially like with regards to the games recommended specs. I got a, I got a 2070 Ti. So it's like, it's not the worst PC. I mean, I know we're, I know we're on 4,000 series now, but whatever. I sort of like, I couldn't play it on my PC. It was too stuttery. And I really like the there are stuttery issues on Xbox as well. I think there's there's just some 
something weird about the way the open world streams that gives it this weird juddery quality which it's the way the game's built you know at the end of the day but i i feel like you like i was presently su- pleasantly surprised yes. by the game i was like it's not as bad as i feel some of the, some of the reviews were kind of harsh I, I really disagree with some of the takes on the combat. I thought the combat was really, really I cool. thought the combat was really fun. unique. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I, I, when you un- unlock more of the abilities and you get, I, I love the finger machine gun so much. I think that's hilarious. Um, and you blast the dudes and like, once you get some of the upgrades, once you've like, you kill, you can kill, you can like stun several enemies at once and then you can rip, rip their cores out all at the same time. That is super yeah, rip, satisfying. Ripping the cores out is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really cool. You know, Love the I, hand animations. Kind of, it's so cool. Yeah, the hand. Yeah, All, a lot of that stuff is just really cool. I just think like it needed a little bit more time in the oven. Needed maybe more, a little bit more ambition, maybe, and maybe more budget as well. It kind of feels like this was a game that you know was a little bit underfunded, maybe, or because Tango ain't the biggest studio in the world. So it's kind of like it kind of reminds me of. Uh, they, I kind of feel like the studio punched above their weight with that game, and they, they, for the most part, they delivered it. Yeah, I, well, think, I think it was a really good game overall. Yeah, and um, I just wanted to say, like, Tango, Tango's on the up and up, bro. Tang, Tango, Tango's on the up and up, uh, and we'll talk about them just after I speak about Deadline Two because I'm going to start with this Hi-Fi Rust thing and kind of ties into Tango. Um, I, I will say, like, Ghostwire Tokyo. Man, a lot of collectibles. Man, they go after the yeah. Far Cry design of like so many things on the map, <laughs> so well, the, many different collectibles. Yeah. And I, it's like, I will oh, say though, like, man, what, like, yeah. I think I said this when I talked about it the other week, but like, I always moan about collectibles. I hate the Riddler trophies so much, and like the flags in Assassin's Creed and, yeah. and all that kind of bullshit. Busy I hate work. that stuff. But yeah, busy work, but. I actually kind of liked it in Ghostwire because it was all full of accurate Japanese paranormal history you know, or like spiritual spiritual history, you know, talking about the different demons and the different spirits that exist in, in like different, the different, uh, you know, folklore religions of Japan, like Shinto and stuff like that. I found the subject matter to be really interesting. So that was like the, the only time I've actually enjoyed doing collectibles. Because did of the you, subject matter. Did you do the side mission they added in this update in the school? No. Bro. I know I did all I the side I did all the side missions in the game. And and so, and some were actually good, really good. Some were just your typical time wasters. Best side mission in the game is the one they added in the school. Legit because a lot of people ask, is this is this is this like horror? Right? And I wouldn't say it's horror. It's supposed to be more on like the creepy side. But that mission in the school for anybody that played it, that leaned more into very horror-ish vibes. Reminded me Mm. a lot of like condemned criminal origins. And there's a jump scare. It got me good. And I was kind of like, I don't want to spoil for anybody who hasn't played it, but something's kind of chasing you. Um, And you're just scared. But the way you approach the, the way you have to approach and solve it, is something I don't think I've ever had to do in a video game before. And I was kind of just like, I don't want to like say what he had to do, but I was just like, man, this is re-, like, I was like, Oh, you know, it's like, like, like my heart's pounding. I was like, wait a minute. All right. You know, like I, if I could explain <laughs> this, it, I, yeah. It's like, so if you, if you haven't done that, uh, go play that mission. It's in like the upper, it's in like the upper left corner of the map. I think it was like added for this, this update. Uh, Jazz, go go play that mission. There, there's that. like a series of I'll quests over one. there. I will finish. We well, don't have to finish it. I'm not saying just do the quest nah, I finish in it. I in the finish in the school. Oh, that 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 mission was 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 really okay. good. Um, I um, they should do they should do a Hisako DLC, man. Mm. <laughs> From Killer Instinct, <laughs> I think she fit really well into the game. I don't know. Uh, have you been playing anything else? Yeah, so I finished Dead Island too. Um, got that. I put about 30 hours into it. Pretty much did everything in the game. I really liked this game. Really liked it. It exceeded all my, my low expectations I had. Right. Cause it's like, 
This game's been in development for forever. Uh, how's it really is. Yeah, and <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I, I, I played some co-op of Code Eastwood. Co-op was a lot of fun. I really like dude, the combat. The combat in the game is not the greatest because eventually, just like what Ghostwire, after about 20, 25 hours, I was like, all right, I'm kind of over the combat. Right, but in the beginning, when you get the katanas and you get the hammers, and the way the you can just dismember bodies, and it's like the bloodiest, goriest game you can imagine, where you're just chopping heads off, you're melting people because you have like a you know a toxic trait on your on your weapon, like all that stuff was super cool in the beginning for for about twenty hours, just doing all that stuff, exploring these very dense areas on the map, right? It's not an open world game. Like I thought it could have been, it was basically sectioned off into 10 different areas. So what allowed them to do was the game ran flawlessly 60 frames and it looked really damn good. Like when you have the cutscenes with the people talking to you, it's like, damn, those are some good, you know, character models. Every, and and it's, it just led to a world that was really highly detailed and really dense. So you see all these mansions, you see the different cars, you get into like the boardwalk on Venice and everything's just packed and there's like all these things that you can find and me and Colt would go through and try to find everything. I was having a really good time with it and the story is over the top. It's stupid. Your character tries to be funny. Sometimes it, sometimes it works, sometimes it is funny. Sometimes it's not, as in most kind of like horror games, and like the it, it get re- and the way the the color palette is, it's kind of almost at that point where the game is kind of like oversaturated, so it gives it that kind of um. Uh, I, I was trying to explain it to Colt last night, but it, like in uh like the way the colors are oversaturated makes it seem like it's not really real, even though it it looks. Uh, you know, it looks really good. It's like, oh, this is this is like a. Uh, it's very difficult to explain, but like the way all the colors are just super bright. It's just like, oh, this is kind of like comic booky to a certain extent, maybe like MCU. But I had a really great time playing through it. Um, and ev- eventually, like it wore on me because I was doing everything. I did all forty eight, uh, forty eight side missions. I did all 24 story quests and stuff. So, you know, after, like I was saying, playing for 30 hours, I always get to that point in open world games where I try to do everything. And then at some point I hit a wall and I'm just like, all right, I don't really want to engage in the combat anymore. I kind of just want to get through the game. But for those beginning hours, I, I was having a blast. You know, I, I was really enjoying it. It, it seeded everything I wanted from it. Um, I will say maybe the thing that I least liked about it was the RPG aspect. Uh, like the, the skill cards you have to use. I didn't really think they were worth a damn. You get all these skill cards, but it was kind of just like, it, it, it didn't really matter. Um, mm. I don't know which character is the best. It seems like each of the characters have different stats, but I don't think that really matters too much. Although their dialogue, I think, does change in the way, obviously, the voice actors read them. So I do wonder who's the best character. I did pick Ryan, and I thought Ryan was was a pretty well-done character. But in, in a sea of, like, AAA games that release broken or had performance issues, the fact that Dead Island 2 looked the way it looked and ran the way it did was, was you know, fantastic. I had a great time with it. Um, I'd love to see Dan Buster actually make a sequel if they get a chance. I, you know, I, I would really like to see a Dead Island 3, you know, learn from some of the things that didn't work in here, like the RPG aspects of how building your character, maybe make the guns feel more punchy because the guns weren't great to use really, you know? Um, mm. but some of like the weapons you can build and the way you just slash through the zombies and just mutilate them, uh, and maybe go to a different area, a different area, you know, in you know a different part of the world that you that is very recognizable because you do do some really cool areas here that stand out. Like when you see the the pier at night with all the neon lights, it just looks so good. You know, I know I had a great I had a great time with Dead Island too. I don't know. I know I, you I played, played it for it. a little bit, but <clears throat> I played it for a little bit. Like I had to jump onto other games to review, but. I I was surprised by how 
how good the combat felt. I know you said some of the guns didn't feel that good after a time, and it does start to get repetitive, but the gore system is just so exquisite. But there's no other way of putting it. Like, you can, like, literally, like... I don't think any game has such a good gore system. Like, you just... You can punch a zombie until, like, all their skin falls off, and they're just giblets jiggling around with ragdoll physics. I have no idea how they pulled that off. There, there, there will be AAA developers studying that yeah. game for its for its gore physics. It's just magic. But um have you been playing anything else? No, they're just just Ghostwire Tokyo and um Dead Island 2. Um I, I bought a Star Wars Jedi Survivor because I was gonna start playing that uh today. And I probably yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do that. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um last case of Benedict Fox I was interested in, but I'll play that eventually i didn't even know that came out it was like game just literally just dropped out of nowhere with no reviews like this is an xbox exclusive and it's like where's the marketing for it i understand it's not an xbox published game but like it's also a game that you know it's it's only on your platform it's day one on game pass but it seemed like just they didn't nobody really talked about this game that much and it, all of a sudden it was like hey we're out it was like, oh, oh, you are? The day before Star Wars? Okay. <laughs> uh, seem, seems to be a bad release date. Um, yeah, I, I want to play that game. I'll probably play it after Star Wars. Um, but, yeah, you are you playing anything uh, besides, you know, Persona or Dead Island or whatever you're reviewing that you can't talk about? Anything else? Well, you I've, been playing a, I've been playing quite a few different random games at the minute. Um, I've been playing Proteus a lot okay. on my Steam Deck. Have you played? You played Proteus, right? No, I haven't played Proteus. Proteus is like, I, and I love the genre that people have started using for this. Have you heard it? They're calling them boomer shooters, right? Boomer shooters, okay. Boomer shooters because they're retro, retro shooters like from the nineties or whatever. So like Proteus is literally like, it's like a Doom. It's like a Doom like, like a classic Doom like from the 90s with pixel pixel art but it's like it's 3d pixel art with modern lighting it is so good it is so the combat feels so damn good i highly recommend it rand i think you'll really like it if you like doom it's it's just a magical game um and it's on it's on game pass so you don't have to pay it pay for it so i've been playing proteus quite a lot i've also been playing loop hero i am addicted to this game loop hero Another Steam Deck game. I was playing it for six hours on my Steam Deck on the battery because it's it's like eight bit. So, you know, it doesn't it doesn't soak up any battery life whatsoever. And do you, you know how much about this game, Ran? Loop Hero? It's not no. your kind of game. But... No, I haven't. I don't know anything about it really. I mean I've heard it's of like, the name, um, but it's yeah, in, it's in it's, Game Pass, is it not? Yeah, it's just it just hit Game Pass. It's sort of it sort of went viral last year and now it's hit Game Pass and hit console for the first time. It's like it's it's an auto battler, you know. It's like an auto battler similar to um, similar to to Vampire Survivors, kind of. But like your little dude sort of like walks around a loop, and the pr the premise is that a lich has destroyed reality, like it's completely completely destroyed reality, and like your hero. Sort of as you go around this loop, like random enemies pop up, like classic RPG enemies, like skeletons and slimes and stuff like that. You kill them and you get cards, and the cards are like your memories. So like, you gradually recover your memory of the world as you're going through this loop, and you have to place like mountains and forests. It's so hard to explain, but it's just super addictive because like you you know you get more powerful, you get more crazy spells, more enemies come. And and like every time you enter a battle, it's just like you, you're more powerful, the enemy's more powerful, the effects are more crazy, and then like every every sort of you know loop you do, you get more powerful, and it's just it's just really infectious fun. And I just like it's one of those games where it's just like I'll just do one more loop, I'll just do one more quest, I'll just do one more loop, and you just just addictive, man. I love it. Really cool game. Um, also, I've been playing another strategy game called Age of Wonders 4. Um, I don't know if you've seen this game around. Age of Wonders 4 came out... Actually, has it come out yet? I think it comes out next week, actually. So like, I reviewed Age of Wonders 4. 
for anyone who's listening who likes civilization definitely check out age of wonders 4 it's basically civilization but with you know elves and magic and goblins and you know zombies and stuff i'd never played age of when age of wonders before i know it's like a long running franchise now but i was like i was like blown away by how cool it was you know you can like summon all kinds of eldritch horrors in the late game you become like you can transform your army from you know regular goblins and find an ancient artifact which turns them all into zombies and now you're like an undead necrolord and all this stuff it's just super cool man super great game another super addictive game but rand it's another game that has terrible performance at launch Jeez. so it's like it's like another another one of these games where it's like oh well the game's really good but where's the optimization where's the qa you know where did no did did Paradox not notice that this game struggles to hit 30 frames a second on Xbox? And like in the late game, oh my God, we're talking like 20 frames a second or less, you know? And I like these these strategy games, they do get complicated in the late game because, you know, there's more buildings, there's more units all over the place. But this is just another level, you know, just not very well optimized. So maybe they'll patch it, maybe they'll upgrade it. Maybe the Xbox has already hit its CP processing limits for this kind of game i don't know but um really fun game and the other game i've been playing this week i can't talk about until next week so you'll hear about that on next week's show mm. and i think that's basically it also playing persona love persona 5 i'm like i'm like a persona fanboy now so i'm gonna play persona 4 no, great that's I all think... we need is you being a persona fanboy now what what why what's wrong with that just, whatever it's what I, all we need. It's all we need. So, what is wrong with Persona? It's a very popular game, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I'm maybe, just... I, maybe I'm going to join Everborn Saga on the Microsoft should acquire Sega. Oh, Sega. Geez. We don't Sega need that. Train. We don't need that. Yeah. Yeah, we do, man. We do that. No. Um. And uh, other than that, I've just been playing Overwatch. Addicted to Overwatch. So addicted to Overwatch. Yeah. I, there's a bunch of guys. No, you don't. You don't got to. You don't got to say that anymore. Already. Mike's not here. Like uh, silly, silly Mikey <laughs> says in the super chat. Press that like button, people, or Mike Ibarra won't come back. That's what he told me. I swear. Yeah, you don't need to impress <laughs> Mike anymore, Jazz, by saying how good his games are. He's not. I'm here literally anymore. playing Overwatch right now. I just yeah, got to play the game while yeah, podcasting. Yeah, that's how I roll, baby. You're you're supposed to give all your attention to Xbox Two and and to the Dude, community like, and everybody. Yeah. But, you, you have to understand, right? My brain operates on two different levels. I've got the podcast brain, which I suppose is like, is that the left brain? And then my right brain is like for gaming. So I can do I can do both at the same do okay. both at the same time, bro. We we have worry, also bro. have Andy Hart. He says, Are you both expecting Hellblade 2 this year? Also, is there any more news on Forza Motorsport release? Uh June eleventh, your answers will probably be revealed. Uh my expectation is Forza Motorsport will be the fall. Maybe in October. Hellblade 2, I'm 50-50 on. I don't know. Jez, how do you feel about Hellblade 2? Do you think it's this year? Uh, like, I think some... Because, like, we had we had a super chat earlier where someone was like... Someone someone said that Hellblade 2 wouldn't launch this year. And it was almost like in response to me saying that I believed it would launch this year. I did say when I said that, that it was just based on nothing. You know, I that was just kind of my expectation of a feeling... Could be completely wrong, you know. I, I have no inside knowledge about the development of Hellblade right now, but I would have thought like maybe if it's coming that they probably want it out, you know, within that quarter to to push Xbox over the holiday season. But there's also the other way. Maybe Microsoft's like we've got something really special here. Let's you know make it as good as it can possibly be. Let's add more features, build it out, make it into our you know the game that everyone's hoping we can make someday, you know, let's maybe increase the ambition a bit. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. We'll find out. You'll know on June 11th, uh, painful discourse says thoughts on the armored core six gameplay trailer. I watched it. It looks really good. You know, everybody's like, man, games take forever to make. And from software is like, not only are we, did we drop game of the year in 2022? We're also dropping another game the next year. Because that's just how we roll. We're from software. Yeah. We're just from software. Yeah. Uh, is from software the best dev in the world right now? Do you think? Triple A dev. I mean, do you, you think they're the best? I don't know. I mean, 
you could you could make the argument that they're one of the top, yeah. That's interesting. I might I'm what I might do a ranking. I might you do should. a ranking of the best the best triple A devs and come up with some sort of scientific method for it. But um a scientific yeah, method. I, mm. Yeah, scientific method. I haven't actually watched the trailer yet for Armored Core, but um my I, I saw like everyone everyone in on Slack in my team, they were popping off about it. You know, they were just oh my god, this looks amazing, you know, and there's just something special. Something special about that dev, isn't there? So mm. And, and it's, it's not a souls like apparently. It's it's more like uh, action action y yeah. kind of. Oh, uh, so it's releasing yeah. on August twenty fifth, sooner than people thought. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I we'll, we'll, boy, we'll see. Uh, Tom Henderson leaked that. Yes, he did. He did. And you know, there are a lot of a lot of being like, oh, that's not news. You know, uh, about leaking stuff well, like that. I bet he got a lot of clicks doing it. Yeah, so probably. People click, it, People were clearly interested in what I had to say. So, well, there are a ravenous that... fan base around from software, right? Well, isn't that not the definition of news? I guess. I Glitch Doctor says last case of Benedict Fox dropped yesterday, day one on Game Pass. I had to manually search for it because once again, Xbox doesn't advertise the game whatsoever, not even on the Game Pass home screen. Yeah, I I don't know what's going on with that game with regards to marketing and stuff, but um, that's another game that like. I was I was sort of like shall I shall I spend money reviewing this or not you know because that's what it is at the end of the day I have to pay someone to review that now I'm the managing editor I have to make those kind of decisions it's like is this worth is this worth it for Windows Central to write about this game and just the, the sad truth is that it probably isn't because not many people are searching for it and um and people aren't searching for it because it hasn't been marketed very much so that's just the way it is I guess yeah rubber knob says Oss is awake good morning all. Good morning to you. Good morning to Australia, but not hey. good morning to Special Nick. <laughs> I was, wait, I was yeah, waiting, yeah, waiting for that. For that. Comment. Uh, Parker Petrov wants to know, how does Jez play Overwatch and do time codes? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I actually, well, again, this is, this is talk, you know, talking about the right brain, left brain thing. I'm, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know if that's, that's actually a thing. But I have the stopwatch open right below where I'm playing Overwatch. So every time Ran, Ran changes topic, I just I just quickly tap the button. However, I ha- a, a bunch of people have died when I'm when I'm playing Overwatch as a healer, and I've had to stop stop and press the button. So I'm not playing very well to, to, as a result of me doing the timekeeping. But that's important because we need timestamps on this show, don't we? Well, we don't, but people people want it. So let's talk about Hi-Fi Rush because it was kind of the big story that happened uh, last week. Um, if you guys mm. are joining the show, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe because our buddy, Jeff Grubb, the Grubster, the Grub Grub, Giant Bomb fame, he he said something. And man, that, that, that websites oh, yeah. and everybody run with it about... Uh, basically hi-fi rush didn't make its money back and microsoft was disappointed in it and that ex- and that management was uh not happy with the state of xbox right um mm. which let, i'll address that part i could see like just briefly about management not being happy with the xbox um i could see that being something that could be true because I do feel that the Xbox, like Game Pass, isn't where they projected it to be, right? That I think they thought it would have more subs. Even though, you know, we'll talk about it later about Game Pass reaching billion in a quarter or whatever, and Microsoft uh, earnings report, uh, you know, being better than they had projected. I would imagine, like, when they game planned out this generation, they thought they'd be higher or they'd have more subs. And I think it comes down to the fact that, like, the problem is, uh, you gotta release games. <laughs> gotta release games in Game Pass uh, for that people want to subscribe to, and they didn't really do that last year, right? So I could see them being like, okay, we're a little bit behind where we wanted that. You know, all of our games were sort of delayed, and we're not, we're not there yet, right? So I could see them being like, we're not happy with. You know, we thought we'd be at 40 million by now. We're only at 30 million, right? And I'm sure they're not happy with the stock situation, right? Um, 
PlayStation just shipped 6.3 million PS5s. Biggest ever for like quarter one and and all console history. Even after they raised the prices 550 bucks, still selling out like you know crazy. And Xbox yeah. maybe conservatively sold I don't know 1.5 million. So it's maybe it's like six to one, five to one sales ratio because. So I would imagine the Xbox brass isn't happy with the stock situation whatsoever. And they probably thought game pass would be a little bit further along, but I mean, it's not going to grow if you don't release games for it. And that's a whole different can of worms. But the whole thing about hi-fi rush is interesting because Jeff came out and said that, and all the websites ran their articles. Everybody then transitioned into, Oh, game pass uh, sucks. Game pass isn't sustainable. Uh, Game Pass, um, you know, ruins gaming. Uh, Xbox players don't play games. You know, all those sort of takes that you expect to see uh, from just a, a simple comment on Jeff's podcast. Who, you know, he hears something from a source of his, he shares it. Uh, but this one got a lot of pushback because the very next day, I think you posted a tweet, right? Hmm about like, Hey, what defines success? And Aaron Greenberg responded to you correctly. Correct. Yeah. I, I replied to that. I quote tweeted, um, uh, I can't, I quote tweeted someone who was reporting what was said. And I think at the time I, I didn't even, I don't think I even looked at who'd said it. So like I quote tweeted a report that I hadn't even read really. Um, but you know, it, the, the person who reported it is someone who is credible, you know? So I was quote tweeting them as, as a, you know, someone who was credible. And, um, and, uh, and I was just like, well, what defines success in the Xbox game pass era? Because if Microsoft, because the report was that Microsoft, it didn't sell enough yeah. that it needed to sell. And I was kind of like, well, if you are, Microsoft, why are you defining success by sales units? Mm -hmm. Because you've created a system that cannibalizes sales units. If you have created a system that cannibalizes sales units, you cannot be angry when a dev doesn't deliver sales units. Because you've created the system, you've made the bed, and you must lie in said bed. You know... And uh, that was my question. And then, you know, Aaron Greenberg kind of responded to it. And really, he was responding to what I said, yeah. but also... He was the more report. responding to, like, Jeff Grubb. He said, yeah. Hi-Fi Rush was a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations. We couldn't be happier with what the team at Tango Gameworks delivered with this surprise release. Yes. Which is interesting um, to me because normally Xbox will stay quiet about rumors, speculation, stories, like you don't always get them to respond on something. But when this started making the rounds, they were like, no, 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 no. We are going to say something because either it's factually untrue or it's not something the, they want out there, but like, no, actually hi-fi rush, uh, exceeded everything that we had placed upon it. And I agree with you. Like if they had the ideas and, and Jeff sort of kind of, you know, he clarified his statements later a couple different times. Um, but yeah, like the whole sales thing, it's like, well, you created this, like if the whole thing with Xbox game pass and, and them wanting to get people into it is the whole draw is you put your games into game pass. And because of that, some people aren't going to buy your games anymore. They're going to subscribe. Uh, so anybody, who subscribes to Xbox game pass or any new subscriber that they may get when a game like uh, hi-fi rush or Starfield drops in there is a person that more than likely, I'm not going to say definitively more than likely is not going to buy that game now. Right. Yeah. So it's like, this isn't the Xbox one gen in the beginning or the 360 gen where everything was based around sales. And then maybe, oh, we have some microtransactions, we have some expansions, right? And that's how you determine success. How much it costs to make, how much did you sell, what's the profit, right? 
with Xbox is different because every one of their games in this subscription service that has millions of subscribers that makes Microsoft a ton of money. But if you're also still putting sales projections on them, you're kind of handicapping them because they can't sell as much as they could have sold because there's millions and millions of people that are going to play it that aren't going to buy it because you're, you know, kind of telling them they should play it through this cheap subscription service, right? So, I don't know. I feel it's kind of weird unless it's like, oh, it didn't sell as as much as it, it should have on Steam. Okay, well, Steam doesn't have Game Pass, maybe, whatever, but it seems odd. But at the end of the day, you, you know this doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if Hi-Fi Rush was a success, and it doesn't matter if it was a failure in, in Microsoft's eyes because we've already seen the outcome. We've already seen what this has led to, right? This isn't a situation where like, oh, Hi-Fi Rush bombed. We need to like reduce investment in Tango Gameworks. We need to shut it down, right? No, they're actually investing heavily into Tango Gameworks. They opened up 30 yep. new positions. So... Like I said, it doesn't matter if it was a success or failure because the end result is Microsoft seeing that, wow, okay, this game was a critical success. Maybe it drove people to subscribe to Game Pass. Maybe it kept people to subscribe. And you know what? We think Tango is a big part of Xbox's future. And we think if given a bigger budget and more people, that they could replicate this success on a bigger scale. And instead of Hi-Fi Rush being a double-A experience, maybe you can transform it into something bigger. So now you're like, all right, we're investing in Tango. Go wild. Hire 30 more people. Go from you know 120 to 150 or whatever the number is. So it doesn't really matter how Microsoft feels about hi-fi rush whether or not it met their sales targets or whatever because they're not their end their end result is that microsoft is investing more into the studio which is exactly what everybody wants right i think i mean loads of people went at jeff for this i i was like i was in his you know when i i defended him in a tweet i was like don't be a dick to jeff and like loads of people are still like uh, you know going hard about it I honestly, I don't think Jeff's information was wrong exactly. I think like, I think basically if I, if I was to guess, I think it was ultimately like the game cost this much to make. And he, he, reiter he, he reiterated this in the apology video he wrote, uh, he recorded, which I didn't think was really necessary to be quite honest with you. But, um, so I don't think he needed to apologize necessarily because he was sort of speaking off the cuff in response to a super chat. And he reiterated the fact that the game cost this much to make and it made this much in return. However, that's only by the metric Jeff had information for. And I don't know, but it's the way Microsoft measures success with Xbox Game Pass is difficult to quantify in an era where it's like, well, how much money did Hi-Fi Rush make for Xbox Game Pass specifically? How do you quantify that aspect of it? So, like, say, just say, for example, just say, just say, off the top of my top of my head, Hi-Fi Rush cost, I don't know, say, hundred million dollars to make or something like that. I have no idea how much it costs to make, so let's just assume it's hundred million, just because it's a nice round number. And then maybe say it made, I don't know, uh, let's say 30 million in sales, retail sales, digital sales, whatever. Because I don't think they even, did they even release it at retail? I don't think they did. I don't it's think just so. Digital, right? Yeah, it's surprise release, no marketing, uh, no physical copies. Not that physical matters even for Xbox nowadays anyways, but yeah. Yeah. So, so let's, let's just say like it cost 100 million and then maybe made 20, 30 million from digital sales and that's but honestly that's probably generous it probably didn't make that much either because it was a shadow drop straight into game pass with no marketing and it was marketed as being in game pass in the shadow drop there was no way in hell microsoft was considering what that game would do at retail 
or you know in in sales physical sales in a universe where they literally advertise the launch of the game as being in game pass they there was no pre-orders there was no there was no buy back edition like redfall where you like if you buy the game you get extra shit it was literally just this is a unit of content for xbox game pass there's nothing else to it you know i don't think there's a world where microsoft will expect um, a game like that to sell at retail. So I think like what Jeff had was just the cold hard figures of how much the game cost versus how much it made through the only sales channel it had, which was digital sales. You know, and there's no information out there how much Hi-Fi Rush impacted Xbox Game Pass. There's no information whatsoever. You know, and I, I wrote this in my article about um, I don't know if you've got this as a topic, but I wrote an article. Last week, which is very popular, it's one of my biggest editorials yep. of the year. I think it was my biggest editorial of the year. I wrote an editorial that was basically like, Microsoft is neglecting. Microsoft's neglecting the console experience while it's distracted by ABK and the shit, right? And at the end of the day, I think Phil himself said in an interview that um, Game Pass sub subscriptions have slowed on console because they're not, you know, the console install base isn't growing that much. At the end of the day, how many people who are upgrading to Xbox Series X, if they're even able to because of the stock shortage, how many of those were already Game Pass subscribers who had an Xbox One who may be just upgrading because they're already in the ecosystem? Are they convert? How many new to Xbox people are they converting? Or, or how many new to Xbox people are picking up an Xbox Series S as a companion console to their PlayStation 5 and stuff like that? You know, We don't know some of this stuff because Microsoft doesn't offer that data in their breakdowns. They they just they just give us a revenue and they give us vague vague things like oh Game Pass subscription services grew, uh, subscription services grew. But again, is that is that just Game Pass or is that Xbox Live Gold? Like <laughs> they don't they don't give us this information. So a lot of it's a lot of you know the people who are tasked with analyzing this and presenting it, you know, a lot of it's guesswork. You know, and I think that's where Jeff was coming from a little bit with regards to Hi-Fi Rush. It wasn't it wasn't necessarily saying the game was a flop or a failure. He didn't, he, he never used those words, but people interpreted the way the way he talked about how much it cost to make versus how much it bought in directly, um, and it, you know he 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 stood by that in, in his apology video. Um, uh, it's sort of I don't know. You can't grow Game Pass. The gist of what I'm saying is you can't grow Game Pass unless you've got platforms to grow on. And I wrote in my article. PC Game Pass is hamstrung by how terrible it is, the reputation it's building building for itself about how terrible it is, and because it competes with Steam at the end of the day. Someone's got like... I'm saying that a lot this show. I really need to stop. But at the end of the day... <laughs> at the end of the day? <laughs> at the end I don't of the know. Day. Yeah. But ultimately, um, it's kind of like if you are competing with Steam and Steam sales... You know, that's an uphill battle for PC Game Pass. Even though game, PC Game Pass has amazing value, it's still competing with Steam, like it or not, you know. And also, as well as that, you've also got... Um, you've also got... Uh, the cloud. The cloud is hamstrung by the fact there's no servers. Uh, Brad Smith came out and said this week that Microsoft has capacity to serve only 5,000 concurrent users in the united kingdom that to me isn't exactly i don't know a, 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 a great figure you know it's that's a pathetic amount of people concurrently so you can't grow the cloud because you've got no servers and then you've got an <laughs> and that comes after microsoft said last year they were planning to double server capacity so what they're going to double it from five thousand to ten thousand? Oh wow big deal right so you're hamstrung with cloud because of that stuff and then finally, you're hamstrung from Xbox because you haven't got any stock for some reason. I'm still investigating this, but there is a stock issue with Xbox stuff right now. And um, I'm not actually sure why this has occurred, but it does seem Microsoft's not very happy with the stock situation right now. They can't market. market. It, there's no point having marketing spend for Xbox Game Pass to try and grow it if you can't sell consoles if you can't grow cloud because you've got no servers and you can't grow on PC because your app is really bad. So, you know, they should be 
they shouldn't be looking to the devs and the content. You know, they shouldn't be like looking at a dev and saying like, oh, your game didn't sell this many copies or whatever. And hopefully they're not doing that because that would be absolutely dumb. They should be they should be looking at what they're investing in their platforms. You know, does the Xbox, the PC Game Pass team, do they have enough devs? Do they have enough investment? Does the marketing team have enough investment? Do they even have a product to market? Why don't we have more stock of the console? There's no reason to have marketing budget if you don't have anything to market. And if you don't have anything to market, um, what the hell's the problem there? Like, solve all of these issues, you know? Because honestly, like, it's not just the games issue. It's not just the games issue we're talking about anymore. It's like, it's a whole sort of, the, the sort of situation with Hi-Fi Rush and whether or not it's successful is, is almost irrelevant in the face of the fact that P Game Pass cannot grow without having a platform to grow on. You know, and if you don't have consoles, if you don't have a good PC app and you don't have cloud, then how can you grow Game Pass? The, if Game Pass is your, if, if Game Pass is the business model, you need endpoints for that service. And right now there isn't enough. So for me, this story isn't about Hi-Fi Rush. The story is about the platform and how it's sort of like constrained by all these various factors. And that's why, like, you know, in my article where I said, the console experience is suffering because Xbox is distracted. Really, the whole platform is suffering because Xbox is distracted. I don't know what's going on over there right now, but it does feel that way, you know. It does feel that way. Interesting. No, I mean, you bring up some interesting points. Even though, like, Satya, they had, they had their, you know, uh, financial report and they had their second best quarter, quarter, th what, three ever? In history of Xbox, people say, oh, Phil Spencer, what has he really done? But if you actually look at, like, the revenues from year from when he took over to where it is now, the revenue has, like, consistently gone up. Second biggest quarter ever because even when they projected it, they were like, oh, we're not going to make, you know, it's, we're going to be down. But And they were down. They were 30% down revenue on hardware, which is frankly disturbing for how, you know, how new this gen really is. But, you know, uh, everything else was pretty good. And, and Satya you know, talked you know, about... Dude, you know what I loved about how they phrased that? What? They said, we had extra supply. Last year or whatever? Yeah, it's like, yeah. was it extra... If you sold through that supply, was it actually extra supply? That was such an odd way of phrasing that, don't you think? Is it, wouldn't it, isn't it more accurate to say you have less supply this year? It would have been it would have been extra supply if they didn't sell through that stuff, but clearly they are selling through. Right. So, but, but then like Satya talked about how like you know Game Pass and their description almost made a billion dollars in the quarter. So like you yeah. can you can say like yeah, growing Game Pass right, but it does seem like Game Pass at least right now is doing pretty well because they constantly mention in every single earnings report that subscriptions growing. That the money from it's getting bigger, um, so it, it seems to be at least that aspect of it seems to be doing you know pretty yeah. well. It could it could obviously everything could well, always be thing. better, it's like, right? That's that's the point. It's like could be doing better. Like the fact that it's growing shows that there's demand, but like they ca they can't grow more if they they can't meet the demand and that's that's the issue they've got right now yeah, i think he's meeting that demand you could grow game pass if you had consoles to sell you know more people buying the consoles more people signing up you know i think P I, they could grow pc game pass if the app was better they could grow the cloud if they had servers they could grow xbox game pass on console if they had more consoles to sell you know it's I would, the, clearly I, what the I demand is see, there i want to see what the server capacity is in the U S versus UK, because if it's, if it's probably directly proportional to like, you know, with their user base, oh. mostly I would imagine like yeah. their server capacity in the U S is significantly more than in the UK. Right. So it, it'd be yeah. interesting to find out that number. Um, but I yeah, mean, obviously, obviously the U S is getting the bulk of everything, right? Yes. Of, of course they are, because it's the, it's the most important market in the world. It's Microsoft's most important market. If they can't succeed in the US, they can't succeed anywhere at the end of the day. And the UK is like increasingly irrelevant in, in the global, you know, in the global market. 
and it's in increasingly difficult to do business in the UK because of Brexit and the, the way the government's in complete disarray. There's loads of like regulations and stuff are all over the place. Like one of the things they did after Brexit was like they adopted all of the EU laws just to keep everything running smoothly. But there's a lot when it comes to like doing trade and bringing stock over to the UK, there's all like all there's whole new processes because before it was just like we'll use the EU process. But now it's like all different and there's all different kinds of stuff. Like even myself just posting things back home to the UK from Germany. I have had so many issues just posting like headphones or something. Imagine if you're a big company shipping like huge pallets of consoles across the world. Like logistics is just, I can't even fathom it, you know, but that's why they, like, they employ people who are experts in this field, but it's just become more difficult. So it's not, it's not, um, it's not, it's not unsurprising that Xbox has such small capacity in the UK compared to the US. I'm really curious what the capacity is in the, in the US. And it's interesting that they shared this. And maybe when the court case with the FTC begins in August, I think it's supposed to begin, if indeed they extend the deal, because there's that aspect of it as well. Um, uh, maybe we'll find out what the, the full footprint of Xbox's cloud is. Yeah. But I think it's interesting to discuss either way. But, you know, looping it back around Hi-Fi Rush, I think, like, clearly... Clearly, Hi-Fi Rush is a success story. Tango Gameworks clearly has some of the, the biggest potential out of all of Microsoft Studios, surprisingly, right now. I think like a year ago around, would, would you have expected we'd be sitting there saying that Tango Gameworks is one of the best potential studios of Xbox Game no. Studios? I don't think... No. I don't, I, I don't think you'd be saying that. No. Like, I, I always love Tango because I love the Evil Within, but like, I wouldn't have expected to be sitting here thinking like, man... Hi-Fi Rush could be a really big deal. It could be a really big deal. Like you can see it in cartoons. You could see a Hi-Fi Rush anime. Like you could you could see it, you know, really reaching up there, like like Insomniac maybe, and sort of becoming like this playground, awesome combat game, super funny, vibrant art style, all that kind of stuff. And then, like, you, you look at a game like Ghostwire Tokyo, and it's like, wow, there's, like, yeah, I can see the budget constraints here, but, man, there's some serious creativity and serious potential here. There's, like, that game has, like, a vibe, like, a, a, re, a, a creepy vibe that not many games can accomplish without actually just slipping into full-blown horror and scaring the pants off everyone. Really cool game. Um, well, yeah, they, they, they've essentially increased their prestige with Hi-Fi Rush. They increased their prestige, yeah. And, and be um, because of it, regardless of whether or not it's viewed as a success or a failure or whatever you want to call it, like the end result is 30 new, 30 new job positions, investing in, in the, the studio to grow it, probably multi yeah. multiple projects just like they had. You know, there is, there's some job listings that suggest maybe one of those projects is multiplayer related potentially. Um, so, but yeah, I don't wouldn't expect to see anything from them for a bit, but that's what I want to see. Like, I want to see growth out of the studios. So, like, to see uh, initially that report being like, eh, man, that sucks because that was a great game. But then thinking about it being like, I don't know. And then, like, basically saying, oh, well, they're investing in, in, in Tango. So, it's like, oh, no, the future is really good for that studio. So, yeah, yeah we had to talk about that. Uh, and then, like, you know, Game Pass billion and stuff. Like, that's – I mean, that kind of flies in the face of a lot of people that say it's not making money – I know it's not making money, it, unsustainable. You know, you, you have like Everspace devs came out and said that uh, they put their game on Game Pass and it increased sales of the games on other platforms for them. I don't know if you saw that. Or Are they talking about Everspace 2? Yeah, they're talking about Everspace 2. Or Team Ninja, they announced like, hey, they sold 1 million copies of Wolong Fallen Dynasty, but had 3.8 million players. Yeah, like on game you know, and stuff. And a high um high on life. 7.5 million unique players. Right? And that was only on Xbox and PC. So Game Pass is doing work. And there are some quality games uh on the service. It's just missing the big first party that you know games to really push it in the stratosphere. And hopefully Redfall well, cool. and, and more 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 honestly, I think it'll be Starfield that really lights under fire 
And it's like, all right, yeah. like this is the beginning. And then you can, you can go into the fall and being like, here, you know, here's your Forza Motorsport. Here's your Hellblade. Here's your Avowed. Here's your Perfect Dark. Here's your Compulsions game. Here's Contraband, which they released a new video as well. So I don't know if they're gearing up to maybe release next year. You know, I always call it like... Contraband released a video. Yeah, they released a video talking oh, about... Shit. Yeah, well... I did not see that. It was talking about like... um, I forget what exactly they were talking about, but they did release a video about something. It was like a guy talking. It was just... It, it, it was like, oh, this kind of just dropped out of nowhere. So I was like, okay, well, maybe something's going on with them. Maybe we see the game at E3 again and it, and it releases next year. I don't know. But, you know, there's there's a lot of things to look forward to. It, and I know Xbox was looking forward to celebrating a CMA victory and an ABK approval, but that didn't that didn't pan out. So if you guys no, are enjoying the show, make sure you hit the like button and uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Solus Curve mm-hmm. and the Super, Super Chats is hardly to get watched live, but glad I am now. Well, we're glad that you are here. And uh, well, this is the big, big discussion uh about the cma stuff and i uh, my favorite topic to talk about <laughs> uh cool dude super noob in the super chat says xbox spice cod franchise and abk produced for xbox series and pc let's see if i missed anything else i don't think i did i don't even know where you want to even begin on this because there's a lot here right there's the response of what the cma said why they blocked it there's the xbox response in return about brad smith Talking about like, you know, UK is closed for business. There's the Bobby Kotick <laughs> response. Um, there's Microsoft also signing another deal last night with another uh, cloud gaming provider, Nware. And it's kind of just like, to me, that was just like, oh, you block our deal? Well, screw you. Like, we're still going to, you're around, we're still doing what we need to do to get the European Commission one, right? There's all these yeah. things. And then, like, what's next? So I guess we start at the beginning. Um, I think, I think Xbox thought they had this in the bag. I'll be perfectly honest with everybody here. I think Phil and the team over at Xbox and Microsoft thought it was going to get an approval. I think they were planning on it. I I don't not necessarily saying they were like you know shipping champagne and stuff, but I thought it was very weird. That the New York, New York Post posted an article about, hey, sources, Microsoft to close the deal soon, right? Literally, like, what was it, two days before or the day before? To me, that smelled like Microsoft was leaking to the New York Post about their plans, about how they were going to get the CMA approval, and they were going to get the European Commission approval, and then they were going to c- close on top of the FTC and basically call yeah. FTC's bluff, Right? To me, that felt like Xbox or Microsoft thought they had this deal wrapped up and then yeah. they woke up uh, on Wednesday morning and saw the block and they were probably thinking to themselves, we just got sucker punched by the CMA. And there's even some, I've seen some quotes being saying, oh, the CMA is all nice and they listened to everything presented and they're really blah, 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 blah. But then behind, you know, uh, but then they don't believe the evidence presented to them and stuff. Um, yeah. Solus Curve says, that's, I th- that's he, the British he, way. Yeah, he that's thinks the British way. Super polite. I bet Microsoft just misread them because they're they're like, oh wow, they're being super. But then polite. who are you paying? That's the, just how British people are. I mean, you should be paying <laughs> your. Lo- I mean, you should be paying the lawyers. Then I mean, what are you paying the lawyers for if they can't? You know. Yeah, I I don't know. Well, yeah, I agree with you, and pretty much I heard that to that effect that Microsoft thoroughly expected this deal was going I mean, through, bro, and everybody they're... expected it to go through. Yeah, sure. Everyone, yeah. Back when it was like Sony was t- saying all that stuff and it was like, it looked like they were essentially protecting Sony, right? Like with all their comments and stuff. I was always like, I think it's 50, 50. Cause I don't know. I mean, what do I know? I'm just, I'm just Randall Thor, the man with the million who reads books. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just play video games. What do I know about mergers and acquisition law? I just like, it's 50, 50. I don't know what's going to happen. I listen to experts and experts are telling me, Oh, it's 75, 25. Or, yeah, this is no problem. You got Michael Pactor out there being like, oh, deal's going through, no problem, <laughs> right? Um, and then and then it stuns everybody, and you're like, holy shit. Uh, I guess nobody really knew anything. And it just kind of, it, to me, it feels a lot like the FTC, 
where the FTC knows they didn't have a case and it seemed like they just blocked it on ideological grounds. This was all just politics. We're not going to let big tech keep on getting away with it. And I sort of feel that with the CMA as well. Like this was completely political. It was like, we're not letting big tech walk all over us and we're going to block on this nascent market cloud gaming which it seems like they don't even really understand when you read through some of the the articles and and some of the things it's like do you even truly understand cloud gaming in general like i don't know uh, we have solace curve saying he thinks microsoft will prevail and win against the cma uh, my name is mud said how much do you think google's complaints and stadia failure affected the cma's decision i mean i, oh, think, lot, I think i think it probably affected it a little bit because you know it's mentioned in there and like they blocked on cloud things so google complaining about it probably probably did affect it but this is what the cma said right so if you actually get their quote um they say that uh the cma has prevented microsoft's proposed purchase of activision over concerns the deal would alter the future of the fast-growing cloud gaming market Fast growing uh, leading to reduced innovation and less choice for uk gamers over the years to come Microsoft has a strong position in cloud gaming services and the evidence available to the CMA showed that Microsoft would find it commercially beneficial to make Activision's games exclusive to its own cloud gaming service. Microsoft already accounts for an estimated 60 to 70% 70 of global cloud gaming services and has other important strengths in cloud gaming from owning Xbox, the leading PC operating system Windows, and a global cloud computing infrastructure Azure and Xbox Cloud Gaming, and the deal would reinforce Microsoft's advantage in the market by giving it control over important gaming content such as Call of Duty, Overwatch, World of Warcraft. The evidence available to the CMA indicates that, absent the merger, Activision would start providing games via cloud platforms in the foreseeable future. The cloud allows UK gamers to avoid blah, 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 blah. So basically, they're like, no, uh, we got to protect cloud gaming because it's a small market right now and maybe hypothetically in the future it could actually be a big market but then hypothetically we can't let microsoft acquire this company because maybe then if we did microsoft would then dominate the entire market and stifle competition i mean that's essentially what they're saying right jez well there's a bit more to it like they said that microsoft's um microsoft's remedies Yes. weren't good enough for them weren't because good enough. they would they would have to be the ones doing the regulating and that they weren't confident in microsoft solution because they didn't want to they didn't want to have to dedicate time to regulating stuff and then they they sort of and this was i tell you this microsoft should really pay attention to this this was a nod to the government when they said this but they said we want to keep regulations low so we can keep we can have a deregulated economy right and this is this was hilarious because th what they were doing was the opposite of deregulation it was com the complete opposite of deregulation by blocking this deal and the reason they said that is because the tory government the 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 government the conservative party government who you know i know americans think a very americans think a very different thing when they hear the word conservative you know so the, the conservative government in the UK is like not exactly like the GOP or whatever. We just call them conserv they just call the conservative government or whatever. But because that's their name. But the, the Conservative Party, they're all about they say they're all about deregulation. They say they're all about low taxes. And one of the things they've said as part of their sort of messaging over Brexit and, and tech is that we want to have a, a deregulated economy so businesses can innovate and we can get like more tech companies and we can get more science and, you know, and all this stuff. But this ruling kind of flies in the face of that. So I kind of feel like the reason they threw that in there is like, oh, we want to keep things deregulated. We, want, we don't want to have to regulate the sector for Microsoft. That was just sort of a nod to the to give the government a sort of a way out of seeming like they were being ridiculously overbearing with this decision, you know. And you have to remember one of the things, another thing the government reiterated to the BBC when they responded to a request for for their comment was, um, uh, first of all, they said that Brad Smith was wrong. 
yeah. that Brad Smith, um, that the UK is a great place to do business. It isn't. Um, uh, you know, empirically speaking, factually speaking, the UK is not a great place to do business. And um, these days. And also, finally, they also said, um, we'll work with Microsoft on this issue. But, you know, it's just hilarious. But that was the other aspect to this, that they were kind of, they were trying to push it as them. They didn't want to spend money or, or do their job to make sure Microsoft honored legally binding contracts to bring these games to other platforms and keep Game Pass low you know and it's it's just ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous um and again ideological at the end of the day because the facts don't make sense when you actually look at this properly one of the things that has emerged out of conversations about all this is that bobby kotick alleged that lena khan who runs the ftc alleged that um the the head of the UK CMA met with Lena Khan last week, mm-hmm. and you know according to um, at least American law, discussing active litigation is you know against the law or something. I don't know if that's right. I'm not a lawyer or whatever, and I don't know how that law pertains to the UK because I don't know the UK seems to be a lawless state these days. But it's sort of like. It does seem like there is there is more to this than just the ABK stuff. There's more to this than ABK. There's more to this than consu- than poor old cons- the, the poor old cloud gaming market in the UK and the 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 five people in the UK that use cloud. There's way more to it than that. And I think it's kind of like someone someone's playing politics here. You know, the UK is playing politics, and they're kind of like, oh, we we want to show that. We're still relevant. We're not part of Europe anymore, but we're still relevant, guys. Look, we just blocked a massive, massive merger between two American companies. That impacts the entire world. Look how super relevant we are. So I think that's part of it. I think also um, winning favor with the FTC. I think like there's this misguided idea that if siding with the FTC the UK establishment operatus will somehow get a political victory out of this in some way, shape or form. Maybe the CMA, like, um, I don't know, gets more budget or something, or, you know, one of the big issues that we've got um, diplomatically between the UK and the United States right now is this whole idea of a trade deal. Because one of the things Boris Johnson was all about after Brexit was like, Oh, we we we're gonna get a great trade deal with America. You know, me 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 and Trump, we're gonna do a great trade deal. And then, like, uh, obviously, Trump lost. <laughs> and then now we're sort of Britain. Obama very famously said, and this comes up constantly in the news about discussions between America and the UK. Um, in the news, they all Obama said that the UK will be at the back of the queue for a trade deal. You know. So I kind of feel like there's that aspect to it as well. There's a dip, there's a diplomatic aspect of blocking this deal, and the government, you know, and it's kind of telling. You know, sometimes, sometimes when when people deny things that they weren't even asked about, it kind of it kind of betrays guilt. I think sometimes if you're like if someone's like, oh, I I didn't do that, I didn't do that, you know, even though they weren't even asked about it. Now, when when the government responded to the BBC's comments and they were like, oh, the, the UK is a great place to be. What are you talking about? One of the things they said, which I thought was very interesting, was we want to reiterate that the CMA is independent of the government. So they were kind of like, you know, <laughs> it was kind of like, yeah, nobody asked you to, to reiterate that fact. So why are you bringing it up? They're bringing it up because they don't want any of the blowback. You know, and there's going to be blowback somehow, some way, you know, and I think the government wants to reassess what, you know, politically they could or could not get out of this, you know, while using the CMA potentially as a scapegoat and being like, if, if the, if the Democrats decide it's a good thing and they're on the side of the CMA, 
then the UK can be like, oh look, see, we're a great ally. We helped you block this deal. You know, even though you don't have you don't have a regulatory framework to outright block a deal, we do. And look, look, we blocked it. We're great. Give us a trade deal. Or if it goes bad, they can be like, oh well, the CMA's stupid. We'll just overrule them because the government in the UK does have the ability to overrule the CMA on grounds of national security. <laughs> which is where he's getting to now, because one of the things Brad Smith said on BBC Radio was that Microsoft invests heavily in defending the UK from cyber attacks at a national security level. And they do. You know, the UK, one of the things the UK has, um, a Frank F saying it was Biden, not Obama. No, it was Obama. Obama said that the UK would be back of the queue for a trade deal. It was Obama who said that. Um, and he was right. You know, <laughs> frankly, he was right. They are at the back of the queue because why would you want to do a trade deal with the UK? It's, it's a stupid country. But um, but anyway, I lost my trial of thought now. Oh, yeah, we're talking about national security. So one of the, one of the things the UK has, which has become something of a, a liability in the information age, we've got nationalized healthcare, right? So every single person in Britain has a national healthcare ID and all their sort of medical history unless you opt out, but you're opted in by autom you're opted in automatically and nobody opts out because nobody can be bothered. So like your medical history and all that stuff is all in a big, big ass, you know, database. And one of the things uh, our lovely friends over on the other side of Europe, Russia, one of the things they love to do is try and hack the NHS. You know, we had like, we had the NHS was hacked a few years ago and, and there was some ransomware done on it. The NHS was only until recently completely powered by windows xp <laughs> so you know it, it's powered by windows as well so you know and microsoft obviously is responsible for keeping those government databases safe from cyber attacks and they invest a lot in doing that microsoft has also invested a lot in defending ukraine from cyber attacks at, at their own expense you know so this is how this is the level we're at now with this deal is that it's becoming sort of like it's becoming a big political problem and i think the government is desperate for it to not become a political problem um by placing blame on the cma but we'll see what happens you know with regards to all that because i'm of the opinion that i was i know you know a lot of people were sort of like I think I said on the show actually that I expected the deal to go through because you know the facts are on the facts are on the side of the deal going through at the end of the day. But when it was blocked, I almost wasn't shocked. I just kind of rolled my eyes because if you're British, you're kind of used to this kind of thing. You're kind of used to being failed by the state. That's kind of what Britain is all about. We've got terrible, terrible government. We've got terrible, terrible regulators. And we've across the board. It's not just the CMA or competitions market. Like the um, the education regulatory board's been on the fire recently, and people have been saying to throw it out completely um, because of like really bad rulings they've done. And also like the the Department for Work and Pensions is always on the fire. Um, for people actually blame the Department of Work and Pensions for increasing the death rate in the UK because they keep making bad decisions about who should get disability welfare. Like I, there, there's like, if you search for DWP on, on the new, on news on Google or something, you'll find loads of articles where people who are literally terminally ill, people who are literally dying have been denied access to welfare or hospice care because they've been declared fit to work, even though they're like literally dying or they've got no arms and legs and all this kinds of crazy shit that the government is just absolutely utterly incompetent. So, you know, and Alexander answers in chat, corruption is America also. This isn't just corruption. This is just utter incompetence. This is just pure incompetence. And that's the whole, the whole establishment in the UK is staggeringly incredible for incompetence. It's not even corruption. I don't even think it's corruption. I think it's just pure incompetence, you know. Um, so it's just, I kind of just rolled my eyes at this whole thing. And I was just kind of like, yeah. But rant. <laughs> I mean, I let you. I let you, um, I let you go on this little rant, you know. Uh, I just like, like to move it on to the next aspect of this. Have you read at all into 
what um what options they've got now to move this forward well yeah so brad smith said when it happened they were disappointed that he says they remain fully committed to acquisition and will appeal the cma's decision rejects a pragmatic path to address competition concerns and discourages technology innovation and investment in the united kingdom so they're appealing to cat which is like the tribunal or whatever that might take nine months and if they win that i think cat then basically shoots it back to the cma to then cma relook at it or something i don't really know so it's that's why i'm kind of like i don't i'm not sure on what happens after this um uh, that would be for like you know the people who would know british law and the cma stuff uh just like <sighs> This is, there's a lot of stake here because this isn't just necessarily about like gaming. Like this is based, I think this is the CMA telling Microsoft, we're not going to let you, uh, get anything anymore. Right. And I don't know. I, I like, so Microsoft's going to fight this to the death, right? They have to. Now, if the European commission blocked this next month, well, then it's over. They, they, they're not going to be able to fight the European commission, the CMA and the FTC. They'll have to walk away from the deal. I mean, Reports are saying that the European Commission is leaning towards approval. But, I mean, who knows if that's actually true because reports were the CMA were going to approve it. So, I'm not too confident that in anything, really. Because I, I just don't know. And quite frankly, I think the deal's dead. I think they'll go with it because they have to. Because it means a lot to the future of Microsoft as a company. Uh, they have to show regulators they're not they're not going to be like, uh, you know, uh, bro beat down this way. They have a lot of like they're basically this whole decision is basically ten telling them like no we don't want Microsoft and gaming. You can't invest the way and acquire things that you know to Im improve your position because you're a monopoly, right? They basically say that like you're a monopoly in cloud gaming. So there's even the chance. That if you look at what's next after this deal, right? Because eventually you'd have to talk about that. What is next? Do you go buy another publisher? And what publisher is it? Do you go get Ubisoft? Do you go get Sega? Do you go get Capcom? I mean, there's been a lot of... I think you even said on Twitter, we talked about on the show, it seems like they're gearing up to buy somebody in Japan, right? A publisher of some kind. Yeah. You know, let's just, let's just say hypothetically, they go and they get Square Enix, Right, Square Enix got a big mobile presence. Oh, we already know mobile is a big, a big thing that Xbox is trying to get. And even the CMA said that Microsoft actually tried to buy a mobile publisher uh, in their whole redacted stuff. Uh, so, but then okay, Square Enix, you get Square Enix, you spend I don't know six million, six billion dollars on them. Let's just say, granted, it's not the seventy billion dollars of Activision Blizzard. It, the CMA has to approve it, but who says the CMA will approve it? Because the CMA just might just look at it and be like, no, you're still a monopoly in cloud. You know, granted, like, they'd be like, well, if you own Call of Duty and that's even worse or whatever, so maybe the CMA wouldn't be that harsh, but there's always that, that, that doubt. And then, you know, Microsoft has other things they want to do, other acquisitions that would get looked at. And they, they don't want every single time to be like, well, the CMA might block it or the European Commission. So this means a lot more to Microsoft as a company. Like, this is something they have to fight tooth and nail to the end, right? So if the European Commission does pass this, they'll probably go through every channel possible. I go through hell. Yeah, to, to get it completely done. I mean, I don't know. I've heard Pactor talk about make quartering off and making it an Xbox UK where okay maybe Call no of way. Duty or whatever and all that stuff isn't on Game Pass just in the UK or isn't on Dude. streaming just in the UK or maybe they don't offer cloud gaming in the UK or something where it's like it's its own sort of thing um I don't really know about all that stuff uh but it just it just whole thing just got more way more complicated it's going to extend for a long time and I already feel uh, like this whole thing depressed. is just well, not, not depressed. I, <laughs> I, I told you I don't really care. I lost the will to live, right? Bethesda I'm was. Just, I'm just tired of it, man. Well, yeah, there's a tired stop. aspect, but Bethesda was way bigger for me personally. Uh, Activision Blizzard was always oh. more about the hope 
that some of their studios would get off the Call of Duty train and then make other content. Granted, I do play Call of Duty every year for the campaign, so it'd be nice not having to pay for it. I don't care about King, and I don't particularly care that much about Blizzard. I also like the idea of like, okay, well, a lot of the money that they're going to make is going to be funneled back into Xbox and getting reinvested into first party so we get more content. So that's why I was like, yeah, this is really great for Xbox, right? But now you, you've you come to this impasse. And so the question is, what's next? And it's like the fact that we j- they just wasted a year and a half and I'm not begrudging them from doing it because you absolutely had to. Opportunities there. You absolutely have to go to the biggest publisher. They offer everything that you're really looking for. Mobile, PC with Blizzard, improving you know Game Pass subscriptions with Call of Duty. It's everything you could possibly want wrapped up into one $70 billion package. I totally understand for the business why you were like, we need to jump on this. But let's be honest, like Microsoft has basically been like had their head in the sand the whole, last year and a half, not really s- announcing anything. Who knows? I mean, there's conspiracy theorists that say the whole stock situation with the Xbox Series X is because of this that they didn't they wanted to seem really weak to the regulators, right? Uh, we talked a little bit before that they missed out on ac- other acquisitions because of what was going on. So essentially, you stayed really quiet for a year and a half. And what do you get for it? Essentially, nothing. You don't get anything for it because now the deal may not be done. It'd be one thing if you got it and it's like, all right, we're set, right? But you wasted all that time. You had a horrible 2022, which blew up into your in your face. And now PlayStation's running at full momentum. And everything surrounding the platform right now seems to be negatively slanted for myriad of different reasons right and it's like okay so you now need to move on to plan b because there's the there's a very very distinct possibility that this deal is completely dead that you'll fight it for sure but you need to move on and phil had an all hands meeting or whatever it was the other day where he reassured everybody that this isn't the end of xbox and that um you know abk wasn't their entire plan it was just it, you've talked about that before right like what how they viewed abk is just like an accelerant to yeah. their gaming plans but i thought it was funny that phil phil basically said exactly yeah you've said what, that, that, what? <laughs> because yeah like on the face of it man losing this you're like oh man like wh- how's xbox going to bounce back from this what are they going to do and it's like okay so you look at like what's next it's like this is going to be caught up so it's like you need to then, all right, well, we need our mobile strategy. Who are we targeting now? We, we, we definitely need more studios. I mean, look what happened. Like 22, I'll just be frank. 22 studios ain't enough. It's not enough. And that's not me being like, Rand just wants more. Look at how long games take to make now. Like mm. you need more. Be, and you, 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 we don't even really know what's happening in 2024. Like 2024 could maybe only have a, a few games. You'd be like, no, so you need more studios because you need more content because games take way too long to make now. So it's like, you got to get a mobile publisher because Phil's been like the Xbox business. If we don't have it untenable. And that's the reason we bought ABK. So, okay. If you take him at his word, you need to go get one, but then who, who who's even available and who's even good enough that you would want. So there's that. There's the PC angle, right? Blizzard was perfect for it. So do you, who, what PC pub developers do you go after? Do you go after Paradox? Do you, do you go after Sega? Because they have uh, a couple mm, really good PC uh, you know, uh, uh, de- devs. It's like, okay, what else can we get to really spur Game Pass? Granted, nothing that we're going to get is going to spur like Call of Duty, but there's definitely something, right? And it's like, oh, do we go back and we look, well, do we go back and, 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 and try to get IOI interactive? Do we, we, we lock up certain affinity? Do we make a pass at Capcom? Do we need to make a splash here or there? Like, these are things that you now need to, like, start really planning because the, the reality of the situation is that ABK may not happen. And you can't sit around for another year while you're waiting to see the results from this whole cat situation and if the CMA will actually then change their decision. Like you need to start implementing this stuff now. And the bigger problem then 
is you can't really spend that $70 billion because it's still earmarked for ABK. Granted, they have a whole bunch of other money. They could do that. But, you know, do, do, do they need to go acquire timed exclusives? To go to the third parties? Because the longer you wait to do this stuff, like, the more of a lead PlayStation will have. And the more of a lead PlayStation will have, that means the deals that you're trying to get are going to cost you more and more and more, Right? So right now PlayStation is at like 30, no, PlayStation's at uh, 38 million, I believe. Xbox don't know because they don't give numbers, but let's say it's 25 million, right? Okay, not two to one just yet, but it will be very shortly if the stock situation doesn't improve. And then if Sony hits the targets they want, they might be at 60 million by the end of the year. And is Xbox going to be at 30 million, 32? But then publishers might be like, all right, well, we don't really need Xbox. I, you saw Oxenfree 2 is not coming to the platform. Granted, I think that's just because of Netflix and they view Microsoft and Xbox as competition. I know people were freaking out about that. There's some stupid in- Inspector Gadget game that's coming everywhere except for Xbox. And it's just like, who cares about an Inspector Gadget game? But you start seeing some of the what happened with Xbox One where games started to miss because publishers were just, and, and devs were like, Xbox isn't an important enough platform we don't need Xbox to actually be successful. You look at that Mega Man collection game that didn't come to Xbox. They just announced that they sold a million copies. A million copies. But it wasn't on Xbox because they didn't need it, right? So these are certain things that Xbox needs to stop. And you can't sit around, twiddle your thumbs, and wait for old men, old women in the United Kingdom to come to grips and understand the intricacies of cloud gaming and all that stuff that, that means and, and how the deals that Microsoft struck because, uh, you know, oh, Microsoft says in this deal that they have that they're, uh, you know, we're going to get 100% of the battle passes even though if somebody bought them on, um, you know, an NVIDIA. And it's oh. like, yeah, no shit, because that's how that works. Do, do you understand how cloud gaming works? Right, <laughs> Nvidia is streaming a game that you bought on Steam. So if you bought a Battle Pass, Steam's getting that money, not Nvidia. Like th- I sort of feel like there's almost a a complete lack of understand understanding about the video game industry in general, but like cloud gaming specifically. There's a lot of things in that that in in the the, the arguments that like really don't make a lot of sense. And maybe Microsoft can win on that, but I'm just kind of feeling all right. I think this deal's dead. Uh, but my whole thing is you can't waste another year of just putting your head in the sand and just hoping you get it through because the longer you wait, your competition ain't waiting. They're firing on all cylinders. They're cutting deals, right? It's just going to get easier and better for them because the disparity is going to grow. So you need to be like, no, we need to fight this. We need to go acquire some people. We need to get more IPs. We need to cut more deals for Game Pass. We need to market more. We need to figure out why exactly the stock situation is the way it is. Because you can't waste another year. Like, I'm sorry, you just can't. Like, I understood why they did. Because the prize at the end of the rainbow was so great. But now you have to... It was worth the risk. Yeah, it was worth it. But now... You need to you need to really start enacting your plan B, right? You can't lose IO Interactive to Tencent or whatever. You can't lose certain affinity. You know, you may have lost Crystal Dynamics and Idols Montreal, all these sort of things. You can't afford to lose any of that more. You can't afford to lose any of these like you can't afford any other publishers to look at you the way Square Enix looks at you. Like Square Enix wants nothing to do with you anymore. And I don't know, you know, like who's the reason for that. But like you can't afford to have Capcom look at you like that. Be like, oh, we're, guess what? We're not bringing Resident Evil Nine to the platform, or or whatever. Like, these are things you need to fight, and you need to you you need to enact your plan. Um, and yeah, that's the, that. I don't know. That's that's my whole thing on all this. You know, yeah, I agree with you. Like the the can't wait for Plan B because I don't think this deal is happening. I think Microsoft might. I, I, Brad Smith's really going hard to make this deal happen. Like, I think what part of the leak from Bloomberg said that Phil had said, told staff that um, poor Brad Smith was up at two in the morning engaging the CMA um, and stuff like that. Like, the dude, the dude is a machine. Brad Smith, like, sounds like an absolute machine. Um, but 
in any case, they can't wait on this. And I think Brad Smith is like, I, I think they they underestimate how backwards the UK is, how backwards the UK's regulatory framework is. You know, there's there's an article from January. There's an article from literally Jan- January where the former head of the CMA wrote to the government and said, our regulatory f- processes is stifling the economy, you know. They, li- they literally come out and said that. And I think, like, there are things which need to be regulated aggressively. For example, one of the issues we've got in the UK, I think I mentioned earlier, is that our, our, our regulator of utilities or whatever allowed water companies to dump sewage in the rivers. So now all the rivers are full of shit, literally rivers of shit in the UK. So there are things that do obviously need to be regulated because some businesses are just scumbags and they will do some of this stuff. One thing that doesn't need to be regulated is a $69 billion deal, which makes games cheaper for most people. That's one thing that doesn't fucking need to be regulated. You know, this get, this deal would have made Call of Duty cheaper for millions of people in the whole world. It's not just the UK. The whole world would have benefited from cheaper Call of Duty. Millions of players around the world would have benefited from cheaper Call of Duty. Not only that, but Switch players would be playing Call of Duty for the first time ever, you know, because Switch don't have Call of Duty. Or did they get Call of Duty Ghosts? I don't think they did. Um, Maybe they did, I don't know. But they'll be getting Call of Duty. So, like, there are no... There are no... There are no downsides. There are no downsides to the deal with regards to, you know... With regards to as as far as consumers are concerned, but all the regulatory decisions they're making on the other end do harm, literally harm people. You know, so they underestimate. Brad Smith underestimates how utterly incompetent the UK is and how the regulatory framework operates on a basis of what's in it for me. It's nothing. Never about the people, the human beings that are impacted by their decisions, because the government for the last 10 years, has only made decisions which hurt people. They've barely made any good decisions since, like, forever. You know, the only positive thing I can say about this government is, you know, the, how hard they've gone in supporting Ukraine. But even that's self-serving, because they can, sell, they can like, you know, sell them tons of British weapons, you know. So, yeah, it's just, like, it's just a nasty situation. I don't think Microsoft realizes what they're dealing with here. They're I mean- dealing with a... A regulator that's operating in bad faith. The UK op- regulators operating in bad faith or incompetent or both. The FTC is operating on an ideological basis in bad faith. The only one they've got any hope with really is the European Union, you know, which is like, the, you know, the, in the European Union, the regulators are regulated. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's, like, that's like how, that's the, the kind of levels of regulation we're looking at in the European Union. So hopefully they will actually look at the facts and have some actually competent people on board who can analyze this properly but the there's no guarantee there either the european union might block it too because at the end of the day they're still probably like boomers who don't understand what cloud what a cloud gaming is they probably don't understand the difference between a joystick and a trigger you know so this is the kind of this is the kind of uphill battle that microsoft's dealing with with regards to the gaming industry and and it's it's kind of like you said you can't begrudge them for trying they can't begrudge them for trying because they had Activision share price went down so bad they had like a once in a lifetime chance to make something really special happen for the yeah. Xbox platform. And what happened and, when the deal was announced? It was blocked. Microsoft's uh, stock price shot through the roof. Yeah, I mean, what that does that signify? It was partially because they had really good quarter. Uh-huh. And I think that was mainly what it was about. Um, Microsoft had a good quarter. Like Xbox grew. They beat expectations. They beat their own projections and they beat Wall Street's projections. I think that's why the stock went up. But there probably is an aspect to this, like, if they don't spend $69 billion on Activision, they could invest in building their own chips, you know, to make the cloud cheaper and really, you know, grow AI out and sort of become and monopoly in AI, much like they are with PCs, you know, because AI is going to take over the world. You know, I, ChatGPT and systems like ChatGPT, they're, they're going to take over the world. ChatGPT hit a million users faster than any web platform in history. 
Like, I think it was like something like three times faster than TikTok. You know, it's it's absurd how fast that shit is growing. And Microsoft has exclusive rights to use ChatGPT uh, in a commercial applications. So you know, there's there's a, there's a bigger opportunity for Microsoft there with AI potentially than than there ever would be with ABK. But you know, it's uh, I personally think not just Microsoft. Microsoft, let Brad Smith go at it. You know, let Brad Smith and the lawyers go at it. But I really think the the time of having you know Sarah Bond or Phil or any of the the main people who are supposed to be running Xbox. Their time needs to be focused on Plan B now. Like they, they, we can't have the leaders of Xbox having anything to do with this deal because the, the platform's been neglected. You know, the platform that you've got today is being neglected. You know, if I'm, I'm, and I've heard the conspiracies about why there's no Xbox stock right now. You know, but the, those those kind of things need to be addressed. I don't know whose job it is to address that stuff. Or whose job it is to oversee who addresses that stuff, you know. But there's clearly some some functional aspects of Xbox that are suffering now, you know. And whether it's whether it's they're being quiet because they want to appear weaker for regulators, or whether it's because they're they're distracted and, and things are slipping through the cracks. I don't know. But all of that needs to stop now. We need to Microsoft to get back on being aggressive, focusing on what they have today. And if the ABK deal goes through, great. But I don't think it will. And I don't think Microsoft can afford to dedicate so much bandwidth to something that might not happen, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't I mean, know if that's the case. It's just kind of my perception right now. In the beginning of the show, you mentioned how, like, it was actually good or there'd be some good things. You remember what I'm talking about? Um, I forgot. You because he was like, oh, people are dooming and glooming. But he said, oh, no, I'm not dooming and glooming. Like, I think this is... You mentioned something about how, like, there was some positive aspects. Well, that is the positive aspect, really. It's the positive aspect is that if the deal does get blocked, and, you know, even though, like, if they do go to tribunal against the CMA, we could see this news cycle go through all the way to next year. But ABK hasn't signaled a plan to extend the acquisition deal beyond july so in july the acqui- the deal to buy activision um hits a deadline so if it doesn't go through by, by july microsoft and activision have to sit down and agree to extend extend the acquisition talks and then shareholders have to agree to it as well so this could this could be all over in july you know and Activision hasn't come out and publicly said that they plan to to keep it going, you know. I mean, they've 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 said that they're dedicated to the deal and dedicated to making it happen. And Bobby Kotick's doing the media rounds, and there's there's all these articles popping up in Financial Times, which is a hugely hugely influential newspaper in the UK that says like the entire tech sector is shocked by the the CMA and its behaviour, you know. Um, and how it could impact investment to the UK, like Chinese companies are, are worried about it and all this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I just think, like, we just can't be so focused on this. And the positive aspect is, the positive aspect is that this could all soon be over and that we couldn't go back to focusing on what we've got and maybe go after, like, less ambitious deals because now Microsoft has experience of what kind of what they're dealing with here you know and the cma said in its own analysis that microsoft should go after smaller acquisitions they did and you know what's also funny is that the cma is trying to protect cloud gaming but all the cloud gaming competitors that microsoft has that signed the deal all want the deal and like no this isn't right yeah, you know, this sucks. It, it's it's hilarious that all the cloud competitors in the so-called cloud gaming market they want this, and I think they know their businesses better than the CMA. This is the this is the literal definition of a nanny state, you know, the nanny state, which is this this meme that like you know, the right wing press often pulls out in the UK when it's like, oh, the government's going crazy, and they're 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 te- they're telling us, you know, telling us how to be and do all these rules and shit like that. So, um, you know, and this is literally the state 
telling companies what they that they know better for their businesses than they do. That is literally what's happened here. And but that is the positive aspect of this. The positive aspect of this is that the CMA has literally said and given the green light to Microsoft to buy smaller companies, right? So if the CMA, if Microsoft tries to buy a smaller publisher now, and then the CMA says no, then it, they're just contradicting themselves. Second of all, Microsoft now probably knows making this all about cloud was probably a bad idea. Mm. It's probably all a completely bad idea. Um, because it gave it gave them a sort of a speculative weapon to use against Microsoft because you can look at the math. You can literally look at the math and say, Sony won't be hurt by this. Here's the math to prove it. However, nobody's got a crystal ball. And this deal was essentially blocked on the basis of crystal ball predictions by the CMA who suggest that, oh God, maybe one day this will be bad. So we're going to block it. You know, that is literally why they blocked it. It's on the basis of pure speculation. And Microsoft kind of made it that way by saying, like, this isn't about Sony, it's about the cloud, you know. But also Sony did that too by injecting themselves so aggressively into the proceedings. Sony must love the way this has all played out. They oh, must yeah. love it because they got everything they wanted out of it. They get to remain the market leader. They get to preserve the status quo. And they haven't, they haven't lost anything from this. Well, plus, Call of Duty is not going to get fragmented into onto Nintendo, into these other cloud gaming services, and kind of lessen Sony's iron grip on Call of Duty, right? Because yeah. that was the other thing. Like you're you're going to expand into these other places, which would essentially also decrease Sony's revenue that they get from Call of Duty because they would sell less copies, which means <clears throat> they would 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 you know wouldn't have as much to fund first party so now uh yeah they get everything they wanted and it wasn't blocked over the console thing it was blocked over a nascent market so like uh, yeah the, i'm sure jim is smoked the cuban cigar and having just a laugh about <laughs> it right I, so we'll see how this this all plays out in the end i am not looking forward to having this thing go on for another year you know, let alone like, you know, how people, people have talked three years. Like it could be three years or something. I don't know. Uh, it's like Xbox needs to, you need to act now. Like you need to start implementing a plan B. If you don't already have one, you can't waste any more time. Cause who knows if this, if this deal's actually going to, you know, go through in the end, it, it may, it may, you know, maybe, maybe, the, maybe, maybe if their lawyers have a really good thing and they can convince Cat, and then the CMA will overturn it. Maybe they can apply political pressure a little bit. Nope. Um, There's no chance. I, I am on the record now. There's zero chance. There's, uh, zero, percent there's zero chance. chance? Still okay. I, yeah, I think. Zero percent. I, I think the deal's dead too. I think it's. I think it's dead, and it's just they're gonna fight it until it's the matter. bitter end because they have to. But you can't waste any more time. You know. No. But that's the thing. Uh, we got Sean saying Xbox needs to give up ABK, and I'm not going to say the second part because it mentions the Dragon game. Radimus Cisco, member for 22 months. CMA seems <laughs> just like the FTC. Issues with OS for cloud shows they don't understand cloud. Also, the meeting FTC and CMA a week before the decision. Yeah, very interesting that they met. Although they said they didn't discuss any litigation. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, we met, but we didn't do anything illegal. Like, yeah, like you would no, expect guys. them to actually say they actually talked about it and broke the law. Of course not. No, we met, just happened to meet a, a week and a half before we made this huge decision. You know, like, okay, fair enough. Um, We have, uh, what else here? I missed something. Uh, Wolf of Darkness. Hello, Jez. If all three regulators block the ABK deal, do you think Microsoft can purchase game publishers in the future? Rand, love you, man. Yes. Love you too. Of course they can. Because all the rest of the other publishers aren't as big as ABK. I know there's the concern that you, if the, you say you buy Capcom, that the publishers might be like, well, you can't get Capcom because their IPs are valuable and we're going to block on cloud. Uh, but I mean, the CMA basically told, told them, like, go for smaller acquisitions. Make deals. Well you know stuff like that so 
Microsoft now, the CMA basically given Microsoft a remedy offer that they didn't have before. You know, the CMA never said, you know, they could just not offer the cloud in the UK. But that's like a lot. Michael Pachter went on CNN and was basically like, that is something they could offer to do. And I think Microsoft was kind of hinting at that when they said, we've only got capacity for 5,000 players in the UK anyway. So like, I think like, that is exactly maybe something they could offer to do is well like, look okay we'll fine we'll we'll exit the uk cloud market and see how fucking competitive it is without us you know investing in it because that is literally what the cma has asked them to do is like oh no you can't be too dominant there but it's like okay then we'll exit the fucking market we'll see how you like that you know will that will that benefit consumers if microsoft exits the market you know they're, they're under no legal obligation to offer cloud service in the uk in the first place so like that would be like an example of the, the the government overreach once again screwing the UK, which is the basis of how the UK operates. Basically, the way the Microsoft can get this deal through is to work out a concession that hurts UK consumers specifically. So if they if they work out a way that will hurt UK consumers, the government will be happy because that's what the government ultimately wants. They want they want something that will benefit them and nobody else so they get to save face with microsoft and then the uk gets to get screwed over in the process that's how the uk government likes to work okay minecraft legends also <laughs> just announced that they've had over three million players already by the way yeah i thought that was interesting because there was some discourse about minecraft legends not selling well on amazon <laughs> and, I well, was that, like, and, well, and not a lot of people playing it on steam either yeah, not a lot of people playing on Steam, and the reason for that is, drum roll, it's on Game Pass. Yeah, shocker. I think user habits are definitely changing with Game Pass. I think for a while, people didn't know what Game Pass was, so like they started hearing about games that were doing trending on Twitch because of Game Pass, and then they they bought the game, but now like they know a little bit more about what Game Pass is. They're like, oh well, I'll just get Game Pass then. You know, and play it on Game Pass. But, you know, um, Minecraft Legends seems to have picked up a decent amount of players, but I, I don't like it, right? I don't really like it. Yeah. We got Jay Mondo in chat saying, uh, Super Chat, thanks for the rant, Jez. Our leaders are idiots. And yes, another no. one, uh, one STN15 saying, MS having to license out ABK, ABK games is ridiculous. So, yeah, I mean, I hope I don't have to talk about... I, I don't think this is something you'll be talking about every single week because I don't think there's going to be news every single week about this, but... God. No, I think one of the... I don't think the litigation will be public. I don't think Britain does public trials like America does. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I Yeah, I think, I think... I think Xbox fans really need to move on from this because this deal ain't happening. You you have to understand the kind of people they're dealing with here. You're dealing with an ideological FTC. You're dealing with an incompetent CMA, which is also being manipulated by the ideological FTC. Microsoft has an insurmountable challenge to get this deal over the mountain, and there's like there's no amount of money or bodies they can throw at this to make the deal happen. There's just no amount of bodies that can make this work. Lena Khan has too much power in the US. And she's manipulating the gullible CMA because that's what happens in the UK. We America says jump and the UK jumps. That's how it works here. So, yeah. I think one recourse Microsoft could probably follow is, you know, if they can successfully sue the FTC and get them out of the equation, maybe that helps them politically in the, U in the UK. I don't know, but... I just, I just don't think this is happening. There's just too much, too much blocking it to happen. So Xbox fans need to move on, and I think Xbox's core leadership need to be able to move on, um, and you know, focus on what we've got because the console experience is suffering. So yeah, we got a Giosku two dollar super chat with no message. Thank you, uh, JC saying ABK devs probably going to be against Sony now. I mean, it'd be interesting what happens if it doesn't go through. Do they do they go back to Sony and be like, sign us a, a marketing deal or whatever? It'd be interesting to see what happens from that. 
Uh, iconic video game says, Randy Jez, do you think ABK will want to give marketing exclusive deals to Sony now? I mean, that's kind of just what I mentioned. Now that they cost investors $69 billion? It's tough to say. You would think, like, maybe bridges were burnt. But at the end of the, the, end day, of the day, yeah, only money Bobby matters. Kotick is going to, you know, have to get, he's got a fiduci- fiduciary responsibility to get the best deals for his company. And, you know, maybe it's like, hey, we know things were said. Maybe Jim Ryan goes to Bobby, Bobby Kotick and say, hey, things were said. It's just business. It's nothing personal. We can still work together. We can give you the best deal for Call of Duty. We can give you the most money. Uh, you Dude, want there's, you there's, want to be with yeah. number. You want to be with the leader. The you know the the the, the we're, we're the number one brand. You want to associate Call of Duty with us and not a loser like Xbox is what something like Jim Ryan would say. You know, so we'll yeah. see. Money money does talk. Granted, that's a lot of money lost for the shareholders, and and maybe he sticks it to him, or maybe he's just like you know I got to do this. I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Uh, you There's know, no revenge. In there business, is. There but... is. A, there is a chance the deal still goes through. You know, a Jez's personal opinion, zero yeah, percent yeah. chance. But there is a small chance it goes through. Zero I don't. Chance. I think it's a small chance. I think the deal's dead personally. But we'll see how this plays out. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get some Patreon questions. So you guys are enjoying the show. Make sure you hit the like button and please subscribe. <clears throat> so we got uh, question one here from Fletch. From the Patreon, patreon.com slash XB2. So do we think the CMA is corrupt or just completely inept? Oh, that's a loaded, loaded question. Um, I think I, it's, uh, it's a bit of both. Uh, you know, I think I... Sorry, what? I don't consider ideologically a political corrupt. I think I think they... I also... I just think they don't... Well, my worry about the whole... implies th- money, right? Well, but, I mean, not necessarily. But my whole thing was I, I always felt from the beginning like... Would the people that are reviewing this really understand the video game industry? And I think seeing some of the stuff about cloud gaming and whatnot, I, I don't think they completely fully understand cloud gaming. Um, so I think that's... Here's why... <laughs> yeah. Here's why I think they are corrupt. Oh, jeez. And, you know, yeah. And it's, it's not like... Um, and I always see people like, oh, God, if, if Microsoft's winning, the CMA isn't corrupt. And if they're losing, the CMA isn't corrupt. Uh, the CMA is corrupt, but the fact of the matter is, I think either way, if they let the deal go through or if they blocked it, the CMA is corrupt because the way they're operating is not with regards to what's in the best interests of the public. It's in, re- it's in, re- it's with regards to what they can get out of this diplomatically or something like that, because clearly they're not doing it with a facts-based mindset. They're doing it. F- they they've done it this way because I think they're trying to win some kind of favor with the US, misguidedly or not. So I think that makes them corrupt. But also, they're incompetent because that's not going to help them in any way, shape, or form because the US doesn't give a fuck about the UK. Jeez. (laughs) F-word, bro. Jeez. Oh, sorry, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's your opinion. That's fine. We have uh, Raj with two questions because we missed last week. Shouldn't this be episode 263? Because 262 was broadcasted on April 15th. I'm trying to help XB2 get to 300. I mean, I did look at last episode and I thought it was 262. So I, that's why I named it 263. I, I'm, I have to look again. And is it sec- two, what episode number is it? Dude, you're supposed, to, you're the, you're the mathematician. I mean, I believe the what, chat, chat, what, 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 what? What number do I have uh, for the show in the title? Is it XB2263? So I'm pretty sure uh I'm pretty sure it's 262. Or no, I'm pretty sure it's 263 because I'm pretty sure the last episode was 262. Well, I wrote I wrote two I wrote 262 on Patreon and everywhere else. So clearly you I gotta, don't know what I'm talking about. I got to fix it, yeah. Um we have uh, Donataku. Jez, when are you going to infiltrate the CMA? Quickly rise to the top of the ranks and change the decision from the inside. Hopefully you can do this by the time Diablo 4 comes out so it can launch on Game Pass. I'm counting on you. Dude, I would be an amazing politician. I would be the best politician. The best ever politician. See, I'm, 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 just, yeah. I'm just perfect for Everybody's it. saying 263. So. 263. 263. Yeah, I don't You're know. I often, I've often thought about going into politics, you know. I think I'd be good at it. I'd be really good at it. I and, can, um, I can count. I'd, I'd use I'd use my power for good, bro. I use my power for good, not evil, like these these current politicians. 
Uh, Rajal says, how long does the cat appeal process takes? If this goes longer than 2024 when the current Sony Activision deal ends, will that spell a potential end to PlayStation as they might lose the COD exclusive contract and get a degraded version? Uh, well, nobody knows. We're, sc- we're sort of in uncharted territory now, to some degree. There's never been this kind of video game court case, and Microsoft will probably be trying to offer as many concessions as possible just to get the deal through. So I think if it did go to tribunal, um, it probably wouldn't be that slow and ridiculous because, like, again, it's the facts are on Microsoft's side at the end of the day. And if, like, they get a judge looking at it, the judge is going to be like, well, this is stupid. Um, so, I don't know. but I've seen people say nine months for a cat appeal, but then I think it bounces back to the CMA and they would have to take a look at it again, but doesn't necessarily mean they would reverse their decision, even though they have in the past. I, I don't really know. Like, so I'm not the right person to ask. Honestly, Microsoft's best possible hope right now is to get the get the government involved i mean microsoft probably this is this this is literally right this is what they should do if they want to get the deal through this is how you this is how things work in the uk right let me explain it to you right now you go to the daily mail you pay off some daily mail journalists to write some negative pieces about the government for blocking the deal say it's a nanny state and that it's killing investment in the country and that the country is damaged because of the the woke CMA or something, right? You go to this, they go to the Daily Mail. They write that. They write their hit piece. The government reads the hit piece and they goes, "Oh shit, we're gonna lose votes." The government reacts to the hit piece and they overrule the CMA deal, and that's how it works. Because that's the only way anything gets done in this country. Microsoft, if Microsoft can convince the right wing press that the CMA is woke, the government will overrule the CMA. That's how, that's how that's how things get done in this country. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So, yeah, uh, like I said, I'd be a great politician. Be a great politician, bro. Uh, we got Silas. Greetings, and Rand. Hope you're doing a bit better. Uh, my first question is regarding the current state of Xbox. I really feel at this time they need something to reinvigorate their base. I know the June showcase is coming, and we are going to see lots of games. But I, along with many others, should remain skeptical. Will the release, will the release windows hold? Will they release feature complete their last two AAA games, Halo Infinite, and Redfall, both with key features missing at launch, co-op, Forge for Halo, 60 FPS for Redfall. They need to earn our trust with consistent quality game releases. With that in mind, what can they do to get us excited again? Big third-party Game Pass deals, some hardware reveal. It's been a rough 2023 save for Hi-Fi Rush. I'm wondering if you guys feel the same. Um... Yeah, I mean, I do be- feel, I do feel like, as a feelings-based jazz Xbox gamer, I do feel neglected by Xbox. You know, there's, mm. outside of Hi-Fi Rush, there's been very little in the way of good news. Like, we've barely any, barely any updates to platform. You know, we've 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 only had bugs to deal with really, and like a couple of posts. We got a new Xbox um, dashboard though coming, Jazz. Yeah, we've got a dashboard coming now, but it's like, dude, we've been waiting for a million years for a new dashboard. Dude, We've been waiting for a million years for the D- the DVR to be fixed. We've been waiting for a million years for all this stuff. So it's, it's kind of like... They took away Twitter Twitter sharing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's Musk's fault at the end of the day. That's so what, what is the... Fault. You said you saw the new dashboard. What does it look like? Yeah, I did see the new dashboard. Um, So the new dashboard um that I... That I saw... Um... I think it was an early version. Um, it still had like it still had war marks on it, for example, and um, and uh, debug stuff flying around the screen. But basically, it, it's not an overhaul. So don't think the new dashboard is a complete revamp or an overhaul. It still looks like the dashboard we've got now. But what they've done is they've shrunk the they've shrunk the the tiles, which is what everyone asked them to do move them down lower to the bottom of the screen so you can see more of your background. That's basically what they said they were going to do. Um, there's more t- There's more tiles. So the tiles themselves are smaller, but the the three wide tiles, which like where they put the Game Pass ads and stuff like that, like, for example, if I go on my dashboard right now, two of the tiles are taken up by the new Star Wars game, and then one of the tiles is Game Pass movie deals up to 65% off. Game Pass movie deals? 
They've I didn't been doing even know that, that was. They've been doing that for a while, yeah. Bro, I didn't know that that was a thing. See, I just clicked on that ad, and now, now I'm literally buying American Psycho for three dollars. Sick. Okay, so yeah, see, the ads work. So <laughs> I think they've got like a bunch of those tiles still going across the the ads tiles. So they're not getting rid of the ad, the ads, quote unquote, because the ads make money, you know. Um, but um, but yeah, you'll be able to see more of your background. So okay, we'll see. I don't know what they're going to add in terms of features. Oh, actually, one of the things that, about the new dashboard that was interesting, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is going to go live or not, but the, do you remember some dashboards ago, they had like the white icons across the top? Do you remember? The Ages what? ago? White icons across the top of the dashboard. What version of the dashboard was that? Was that, was, was that when it scrolled from left to right? It could have been. I don't really remember. Yeah, I think there might actually be some usability differences in this dashboard, but... Um, I only saw part of it, so we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, so what can they do? I mean, it's tough because it's not like you can just be like, go to a, 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 a one of your devs and be like, make us a vertical slice of a game to really invigorate people. Yeah, the, you know, the showcase always does its job to hype people up. Uh, I think it's more like... Uh, Either the games just need to be good. Redfall needs to be really good. If it is, people will be excited. Starfield needs to be exactly what they have been saying they hope it's going to be. That'll get people excited. I it sort of need to get away from like the asterisks that's like, Redfall's coming, but only 30 frames. Or, Hi-Fi Rush, but it wasn't a success. Or, uh, you know, some of the things that have been happening where it's like, it just seems like these stories take place and there's like negative PR surrounding surrounding it and they need to like i don't know they need to be more cognizant of all that stuff but i'm not necessarily sure like what they could do to fix it other than like release great games have a good really good showcase and the rest sort of keep you know kind of plays out how you would expect you know um but i I mean i have been getting a lot more messages recently about people feeling the same way you do like I'm not excited, or I, I feel like getting yeah, rid I of mean, my Xbox because a lot of the lot of the talk around. The, I have said I want to get rid of my Xbox, bro. I'm not saying you. I'm saying the messages I get from people. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of a lot of messages, being like, I the think doom and gloom. Yeah, because I don't know. They 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 feel like oh, the ABK deal not being you know, you know falling apart means the death of Xbox, and why does it always seem that it's always some issue and things can't just go off without a hitch? I, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure what um, they can do to rectify that other than just be like, give people what they want, give people incredible games, and m- for the most part, they'll be happy. I mean, th- there's always going to be people that troll the console, just like there's Xbox fans that troll PlayStation. There's always going to be people that are never going to be happy no matter what happens. There's always going to be people that move the goalposts. Or whatever. Yeah. So I, I speak I speak to people like that sometimes and they'll send me a DM looking for some hopium or whatever. And I'm just like, dude, just if if it if 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 it's affecting you this much that like you're constantly worrying about the platform and what's gonna happen, seriously, just switch to PlayStation or get a PC or, or do something else because at the end of the day, these are just console platforms. It's not a big deal. You know, if Xbox died tomorrow. It's not like they'd shut down their Xbox operation. They'd they'd keep they'd probably switch to being a PC publisher. You know, like like Steam, and they'd keep Game P, Game Pass going, and they'd you know they'd probably license Aces to make a badass Xbox handheld or something like that. You know, it's, yeah. there's no there's no future without Xbox. Like even even if things were terrible and there's there's the consoles weren't selling at all and Game Pass wasn't growing. And it wasn't saying, oh, by the way, we've got three billion in revenue or whatever, and Game Pass makes a billion dollars a billion dollars a quarter, which is what Satya said on the um the uh, the the um investors call. You know, so Xbox is as a business, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to be worried about Xbox as a business. It's doing better than ever. You know, it's it's posting record quarters constantly. Even without these so-called AAA games, which yeah, well, were even you know, not without uh, any Xbox hardware. 
even without any hardware. So, you know, the business the business itself is healthy. And what I do understand is like people feeling like there's not as much excitement about the platform. You know, mm. Microsoft's been on a. If you are someone who's constantly in the news cycle, and let's be honest, that's a niche. Most people don't read gaming news. Most gamers don't read gaming news. Most gamers aren't even aware of the conversations that are, that surround Xbox or PlayStation, and they're not that invested in the hobby. But for those of us that are in, that invested in the hobby, like you know us, um, it's not. There's not been that much to be excited about recently. You know, Minecraft Legends. You know, it's it's all right. You know, it's but it's not great. Even as a strategy game player, I just I bounced off that game really quickly because it's just not that interesting you know and then you know hi-fi rush was a bright spot everyone talks about hi-fi rush being the bright spot and we just want more bright spots and i think that's okay i think it's okay to be feelings based every now and then and be like man i'd be great if there be if there was a hi-fi rush every quarter you know and that's i think that's what microsoft's trying to get to they're trying to get to having a hi-fi rush every quarter will they get there i don't know it's just gonna take time you know they've got the studios to do it but things are getting, things are taking longer and longer to make, and they probably need even more studios. If they are trying to make a Netflix-like subscription service, they need to invest in PC Game Pass because I think it's PC Game Pass is going to be what grows Game Pass at the end of the day, um, in the near term. It's not going to be cloud. They haven't got any servers. It's not going to be console because they haven't got any consoles to sell. So like, where's where's the logical place to grow? It's going to be PC. PC is the logical place to target. Which means they need to invest everything they've got into making that app not shit, which is apparently difficult for them. Apparently very difficult for them. Um, but they're but that's the thing. They're, all these all the reasons to be excited, they're all kind of like they're they're not that big of a deal, you know. Because there are still games to play, the platform still works, they're still fun, you know. My friends are still logging on, and we're still playing Overwatch. We're still playing Wild Hearts or whatever games we're playing at the moment. You know, sort of have to like step out, step out of the bubble of the doom and gloom, and just be like, oh, actually, the platform's all right at the minute. You know, it's a much better place than it was in 2017 or 2016, 2015, when you know you had Terry Myers and strangling the budgets and stuff. They've got studios which they didn't have before. And everyone, everyone here on this show was excited about the future of Xbox before the ABK deal was a thing. It's true. And I think Miles, Miles said it best. Miles Dompier said it on Twitter. He said, you know, everyone was excited about Xbox before the ABK deal, you know, and everyone's doom and glooming. Like, what has changed, really? They don't get ABK. Yeah, they've been a little bit distracted, but it's not like the platform's dying. They're still posting record quarters constantly. So, you know, could they be growing faster? Yeah. Could things be a little bit better if they're focused on it? Yeah, maybe. But I think overall, things are in a pretty good place and things will only get better. So need to be a little bit more patient and just play some of the games. Play some of the games in the backlog that you 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 haven't played, you know? Be like me. Play shitloads of games and never finish them. <laughs> Don't be <laughs> like that. But yeah. Uh, he says, Silas also says, I was also curious from a financial perspective how third-party games appear in console storefront and the costs associated. For a game that doesn't have a marketing or Game Pass deal, the publishers pay to have their games on consoles. I know about the 70-30 revenue split, but there's just some sort of publishing cost that goes to the platform holder. For example, with Street Fighter Six, does Capcom just get to publish on Xbox storefront at no cost? Is there a fee on top no. of the 70-30 split? Thank you from Aerodactyl. Cofrigidus, Ducket, Makuta, and all of Rand's Pokemon friends. <laughs> well, you know, there's there's the thirty percent fee, which, as far as I know, I don't know for sure, but I expect some publishers negotiate slightly different fees every now and then. Um, and I think like some games also probably get some form of upfront investment as well to be on Xbox, even if they're not in Game Pass. They call, like, they call it, you know, user acquisition fees, you know. Um, but Capcom, they don't get to be on Xbox for free, you know, because it costs money to deliver digital games. It costs money for this to run the platform. And that's how Microsoft profits. They they run all the, they run all the, the boring stuff, like the payment methods, 
they handle all the the legal processes for running a platform they make the hardware all that stuff costs money so they have to they have to make a profit otherwise they don't have a business so but there are probably other costs involved like especially when it comes to retail obviously amazon takes a cut and you have to pay you have to pay some you have to pay a fee to microsoft as well so if you you know you're investing in physical stuff you also have to print the disc so you have to play it pay the manufacturer as well because like there aren't many studios that print their own discs these days there are some um get guess who prints their own discs mm. who get, guess which publisher embracer group mm, really embracer group has that's a big part of their business but is uh printing discs for all the companies um but but yeah it's uh there's loads of costs i guess but yeah yeah uh, Red and Miss Cisco, hi. Hope you guys are doing okay. Since most likely most of the talks will be ABK CMA, I'll try to change it up a bit. Question one. On the same day the merger was blocked by the CMA, Spawnway made a video on his second channel about PlayStation patent regarding a multiple drive, not necessarily detachable. It seems the patent was probably to reduce vibration. I wonder if the rumors of a new PS model may have been misunderstanding of this. What do you guys think? Do we still think play- Sony plans to have a PlayStation with a de- detachable drive? Um, I mean, it's. I think they'll definitely do a slim. I mean, Tom Henderson's information always seems to be really solid. So unless he's proven wrong and it is just a vibration thing, I'm going to go with Tom's right. And the detachable drive is the correct thing. And it's their slim and it's a way to combine both production lines and just making one PS5 and then having, you know, the the thing. You know what I mean? uh yeah so they only have to make one but yeah uh so uh, but i i think i think tom's got really good sources so i i I believe that's the plan and two metacritic review bombing happened again with horizon forbidden west dlc metacritic says that they're still working on a solution so they use a user score system similar to steam recommend and not recommend would this create even more issues um yeah i did see Mm. i did see that the the that happened again uh so i yeah i don't know what you what you would do like user scores are you're always i mean it happens on rotten tomatoes you're you you know when when things get too woke or whatever people people will review bomb it or what what have you there's always exclusives from each platform the other people will then go downgrade it or you know the same people will then give it tens it's uh you know with an, an, an anonymity it just kind of comes like people can do what they want um maybe a process would be you'd have to like link your xbox or play or playstation or steam account so like you actually have to own it before you're able to review it you know where it's like oh do you actually own this on xbox uh okay now you can review it but if you don't then you can't maybe that's a way to curb it but i don't know how that would be they could implement it yeah. um it's just, it's very difficult. And I, I'm not sure there's a really good solution for it. I mean, I guess you could do recommend, not recommend and, and remove like the numbers, but the number is the whole point of Metacritic in the first place, seeing the, you know, the, the 9.2 or the 6.4, right? Um, yeah, it's it's really weird that that game got reviewed by, well, I suppose it's not weird. You know, it's, it's not weird because like. it's, uh, you know, yeah, we live in, yeah, yeah. we live in a society, right? So we live in a society. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's so, it's so pathetic. Yeah, yeah, it is. I think that game looks amazing. It is. Pathetic. I played the third one, but played the first one, never finished it. Didn't run that well on my PC. Sadly, I really need a new PC. Rand, can I have some of your YouTube millions to buy a forty nine? If I had YouTube millions, I give them to you, bro. But I don't. No YouTube. You do millions. not. Sure. No. Uh, Christopher Marlowe says I have a gaming PC, but never played any Sony games. What do I play first? Spider Man, God of War, Horizon, Final Fantasy VII Remake, or something else? Well, um, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of those, really. Uh, I think God of War is the best of all those. So, do you want to start with the best one? Or do you want to work your way up? I mean, honestly, God of War is my favorite out of those. So I would say start with God of War. Uh, if you're a really big fan of Final Fantasy VII Remake, you could start there. I haven't played Horizon, so I can't speak on it. Spider-Man's also really good. You can't really go wrong with any of those, to be honest with you. And mm. question number two. 
If the ABK deal falls fails, can we agree Microsoft should buy the IP for Call of Duty and make it exclusive despite Sony? And also to prove to regulatory board Sony is a big fat liar so they have a harder time buying companies in the future? Um, <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't think, I don't think Activision would sell the Call of Duty IP. I think no, I think zero percent chance yeah, that happens. I mean, unless like all that money was going to shareholders or something, there's just no way that would happen. Yeah, yeah. Like, the whole the whole basis of their publicly traded entity is Call of Duty. You know, they wouldn't have they the wouldn't best, have a business. Anymore. The best thing that could happen is maybe Xbox gets the marketing deal for Call of Duty again if it fails. Yeah, maybe, maybe, and even that's not a for sure thing. And he says, "Can I well, have the one thing, more?" Well, that's the problem with marketing, though. If you're gonna if you're gonna have the marketing for Call of Duty. You kind of need consoles to sell, don't you? Yeah. So true. And he goes, "Can I have one more thing to say?" Hey, Rand, I wanted, I waited years for the for you to try Stormlight Archive. Project Hail Mary is an incredible book. You should give it a go. Oh, I've read Project Hail Mary, and it is indeed an incredible book. And I've gotten mm. like four other people to read that, and uh, so that that book is here. Inc- we go incredible. again. Now we're getting through this because we're coming up to the end. We're you know. Lazar um, Wolf, I'm sure you've already face, talked man. about ABK to death by the time you get to these questions, so I'll change it up a bit. What's the best movie you've seen recently? And what's the best TV show you watched recently? Thanks as always. Best TV show? Succession, without a doubt. Best I heard mo- loads of good things about that. Succession is amazing. Best TV, sh- best movie you've seen recently? Oh, man, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I've really watched any movies recently, to be honest with Pokemon you. Pokemon movie? No, I haven't watched Pokemon movie. I don't think I've watched uh, any movies recently. To be, uh, have you watched Detective Pikachu? No, I haven't watched that. No, dude, Detective Pikachu is awesome. I'm shocked they didn't. Make I mean, one. I guess like the best movie I've seen recently, going back to last year, is Everything Everywhere All at Once, which won Oscar Best Picture. I love that movie. So I'll yeah, pick that. I, and that I'll, movie's awesome. And even I'll though pick I don't know what the hell was going on. Succession as best TV show. Uh, dude, what was going on in that movie? Everything everywhere all at once. A lot of crazy stuff. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, (laughs) Governor Grimm. Not sure you guys are going to do the original round of questions. I was pretty long-winded the first time, so here's a more concise version with the bonus question. With the ABK deal dead in purgatory, what does Xbox do from here? The 12 months showing from last year looks worse and worse in hindsight. They've effectively sat on their hands for marketing last year. I understand that they need to intend to appeal to CMA's verdict, but surely... That can't continue to stay on their hands as we see more games skipping the platform and hardware sales drop. Well, they got to, you know, to keep it also concise, they got to implement their plan B. They got to target some things that they think will help if they don't get ABK. They got to cut some more deals and they got to implement and they got to they gotta basically do, do all that. Um, yeah. So we did talk about that. Uh, and he goes, number two, I was seriously disappointed with Fretfall only hitting 30 FPS at launch. Then I see that Tears of the Kingdom has a not great FPS and Jedi Survivor also suffers and can't hit 60 even on high-end PCs at launch. Both TOK and JS are will get great reviews this, in spite of their FPS. Do you think Redfall will get their reviews tanked for it? <clears throat> this assumes yes. Redfall reviews don't come out before the show and resolve this question before it gets asked. Keep on trucking, guys. Glad to have you back. Damn it, this is long-winded too. <laughs> well, I, I kind of agree that I kind of agree that the 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 discourse over 60 FPS will probably impact the review score, and it'll be very very interesting. Look look out for the outlets that criticize um, Redfall's frame rate, but then don't say a damn thing about Breath of the Wild 2's frame rate. You know, and I know yeah, it's an FPS, blah 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 blah. But I can guarantee if if it was the same situation, if it was like an open world game that had that had marketed at 60 FPS, but then we found out that it wasn't 60 FPS or whatever. It'd be the same situation. Like people would be like, oh yeah, there's a, there's a reason to hate on this and I better mention it or, or I'll be called out on it. And I'm scared of what people say. And, you know, so I do think it'll impact the review score. Like it is what it is. Um, but my, it's Microsoft's, Microsoft made their own bid. Like the retail boxes literally have 60 FPS on them. Someone at Microsoft thought that game was 60 frames and nobody at Bethesda had informed them otherwise. So yeah, the marketing team thought it was 60 FPS. Everyone thought it was 60 FPS on the on the console exclusive platform. Everyone th- everyone at Microsoft seemed to think that. See, the so, thing is, I'll, I'll say this really quickly. The reason people were overlooked the performance issues of Star Wars and Zelda is because everything else about the game is going to be immaculate or amazing. 
Yeah. And they'll be like, I can't, like, the reviews are going to be really high despite that because the game's incredible despite the reviews, right? And if Redfall's the same, then the reviews will be good despite it being 30 frames. However, if it's not, where it's like, if, if Redfall's just mediocre and then the 30 FPS makes it worse, then I could see people really laying into it and being like, oh my God, well, the game's not even good in the first place. That's why you see people giving a pass to Star Wars despite all the issues or going to give a pass to, to you know, uh, Zelda for the bad, you know, tech stuff because the game itself, what you're doing in it and the story and all that stuff is top notch and it overcomes any performance problems the game does has. So will mm. Redfall, you know, suffer that? We'll, we'll have to we'll wait, wait till next week to find out. Uh, Blaytoven, glad to have you two back. Hope you're having a both great week and an upcoming weekend. Number one, Microsoft being prevented from making acquisitions due to their lead in the barely emerging cloud market, would this also prevent them from acquiring smaller developers and publishers? Smaller developers, no. Like, if they went after a Sobo or IO Interactive, no. They'll they'll be able to get those. You, you can't be like, well, you got certain affinity, and they have 100 employees, and you can't get them because of a cloud. Not. No, that's not going to happen. They'll be, they'll be able to get smaller developers, for sure, independent ones. And I do think there's a pot, there's a good possibility they could get smaller pu- like they wouldn't be able to get EA or take two, but you know someone like a Paradox, somebody like a Capcom, I think they they would be be allowed to. Um, although I guess you never know. I guess how how much of a hard on does the CMA have for for basically you know their their political and ideological stance? I guess we'll find out. And do you think major cloud competitors, Amazon, Google, NVIDIA, Tencent, have intentionally kept quiet over last year in terms of acquisitions in order to appear behind in cloud gaming and therefore squash the deal? Uh, well, I think Microsoft probably should have engaged Amazon a little bit on this too. Amazon, Amazon literally launched their cloud gaming service in the UK in the last few weeks. Obviously, Amazon would probably like to get Call of Duty into its service. Amazon already has a very deep relationship with Activision Blizzard. Like, um, you know, Twitch Gaming has deals every month for every Blizzard game, like Hearthstone, free Hearthstone cards, um, and all, all, all sorts of other shit. Um, Overwatch stuff, points, coins, whatever. So, yeah, it's interesting like i do wonder like if amazon was even asked about some of this stuff and like does i don't know does the cma even know that amazon's a potentially a party to this but there was a bunch of respondents to their um questions that were redacted we don't know who and what said what when where a lot of the a lot of the time I think it's I think it's stupid that Google was even asked, considering Google isn't a cloud platform anymore. I mean, I think they provide third party cloud platform services or whatever. But yeah, I kind of feel like it's just ridiculous. Like there's just it doesn't matter what Microsoft does. Like I've I've said, you know, there's no way the deal gets through because at the end of the day, we're talking about pure ideology now. So uh can't cut through ideology with facts. Yeah. And he goes, question two, were Xbox t- to only focus on console and PC, it seems like the deal would have passed with no problems. Instead, they are being punished for innovation and investing in a newer cloud technology, which ultimately hurting hurting them in the console and PC space in a major way. Do you think it's worth it for Microsoft to be investing in cloud gaming? The market regulators around the world are drawing a line this early, telling them they can no longer grow in the sector. The problem with that is basically, Phil. I think Phil sold Satya on the whole vision of Xbox as a cloud gaming thing because Microsoft is a cloud is a cloud based company, right? As like cloud gaming was going to be the way Xbox was going to reach 4 billion gamers. It's integral to the platform. It's how they're going to grow console. I think to them is sort of stagnated. Everything was based around like that and like maybe growth on PC. So, you know, without cloud, I don't even know if, xbox even exists at this point they could have just shuttered it back when Satya was like what are we doing in gaming right um all the growth that you have now all these deals are because of like uh, the eventuality of like they think cloud is going to be this big thing not because 
you know, they didn't spend $70 billion to sell, you know, more consoles. They spent $70 billion to, 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 to basically make all this money, uh, everywhere on PC and mobile and cloud on console. It wasn't specifically about one thing, you know? So, um, if cloud wasn't a thing, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't have bought ABK because I don't think, I don't think Satya would invest. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think AI, AI is part of this too. I think Microsoft believes that AI, AI can accelerate game development, maybe make games like Call of Duty cheaper to make. Um, that's also a big bet here. I don't think they'd be spending $69 billion if they didn't think there was a significant play for AI and cloud. And it's not just cloud. It's going to be AI as well. Yeah. So... Yeah. Achievement says, uh, Ryan, can you take the time to explain the bone cream joke, the lore and such? I'm unfamiliar with it. It was something Jez said <laughs> one stream. Uh, something about, I honestly don't really remember. Um, but he mentioned bone cream and then it kind of became a thing, really. kind of like filmic. I honestly don't remember the lore around it because it was kind of a thing for a few episodes and then it kind of died away, unlike filmic. And scalebound. Maybe, dude. Yeah. Someone in the chat. Someone in the chat needs to remind us what the hell the bone cream thing was, because I can't remember. I either. think it was like something you described as uh, like something. As oh like, yeah, no, no, no. It was the cut. It was the cut. The shade. Oh, it was like the shade of white or whatever. The, yeah, the color of something. Like the 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 color was called bone cream. Oh okay, yeah. And that's that sounded. And we, we laughed about naughty. it. Yeah, we were like, we had a good laugh about it. And he also says, as much as I love Capcom and they have overpassed my want for Xbox to acquire them over Sega, I believe the reason it won't happen is because Capcom already seems very Western, more so than the other major Japanese publishers. And I think what Xbox is looking for are JRPGs, which Capcom has none. How important are JRPGs to Xbox future as far as Japanese acquisitions are concerned? Well, there was that rumor that Tango's actually making a JRPG as well. <clears throat> yeah, there's a rumor that... Yeah, because um, there's some... Tango loves to tease. Well, yeah. actually, a lot of Bethesda studios love to tease. A lot of Bethesda games have teases for upcoming projects in their games. And um, in the... Um, in Hi-Fi... Was it Hi-Fi Rush? Or, no, I think it was in Ghostwire Tokyo. In, the, in Ghostwire Tokyo, people noticed that there's some posters and some arcade machines that have some anime concept art on it. And these machines, these arcade machines, and these posters weren't in the original version of the game. These, these, this concept art only appeared in the, the updated edition that we've recently got with the Spider's Thread DLC and stuff. So people are kind of speculating, like, what? that's so random that they'd include this, J this JRPG concept art into the game you know so a lot of people have s sort of speculated that they they are teasing something there maybe they're teasing something but how important are jrpgs to the platform it's kind of a chicken and egg thing i think you need japanese games if you want to grow in japan but you know in the interim you need to accept that maybe the sales on some of those games probably won't be that great because you know um there isn't the audience isn't there for them the audience is um the audience is on playstation or nintendo or whatever and still every week almost every week or every two weeks i get an email about some smaller jrpg and some smaller japanese kind of game that um is is coming at all consoles quote unquote but not xbox so um they need to build that audience and so maybe take some invest a little bit to make that happen game pass is obviously a great vehicle for that but i think at the same time you kind of you're also sort of painting yourself in a corner because you kind of don't want to train all your dev all your potential dev partners to think like the only the only way i can make any money on xbox is via game pass you know so it's it's difficult it's a tough needle tough needle to thread and i don't envy whoever whoever's job it is to sort of plan all that shit out you know yeah uh, Gaming by Choice says, problem is now Sony's market leadership 
We'll go without question now. ABK was an equalizer. Otherwise, this gen may go like last gen. I question if this will affect MS backing of Xbox. Great show. Uh, well, I don't think I don't think you need to worry about Microsoft's um, not backing Xbox. They're all in. Satya's all in. Phil's on the executive leadership team. He's the CEO of Xbox. They're not just going to get rid of a whole division, you know. Like, you're either all in or you're not in at all with gaming. It's so competitive, and I don't think they can half ass it. You know, yeah. the, the the whole sort of, the, the idea that, like, they could reduce the budget or reduce the scope of the, the studio, uh, redu reduce the scope of what they're doing. I think, like, the, the, only, the only reduction in scope you might see if things go really, really bad is that Microsoft focuses more on Windows experiences for their gaming stuff. But I think like they'll always make games and they'll always publish games. And I think Game Pass is here to stay for sure. I mean, it's making a billion dollars a quarter. You know, why why would they get rid of a billion dollar business? You know, That's that true. has all the all the potential to grow. You know, it's like a, we we discussed how it's hamstrung earlier. You know, hamstrung by a bad app, hamstrung by console supply, hamstrung by cloud capacity. All those things are things that can be remedied. You know, easily. And the good, the demand is there because it's growing every quarter a little bit, you know. And if they they fix their content issues, if they fix the platform issues, it will grow much more quickly, you know. It's true. So I don't think there's any reason to worry about Xbox. Yeah. Right now. Uh, Jay Corden says uh, MS should forget ABK and go get UB and Square or Capcom. I Siler yeah, says Jedi getting torched all over Twitter on PC for being uh bad why do we keep doing this apparently this is the sixth game this year that released broken ps for ps5 version is fine though i heard the ps5 version is, isn't very good either but uh, yeah i think ps ps5 and xbox are kind of have similar choppiness but the thing is like we talked about earlier most people just don't care about a few drop frames i think like when you when you get like digital foundry doing their analysis they don't focus on the, the entire experience they focus on like uh, you know does it drop or does it not drop and there's that sort of binary binary thinking or binary presentation which shapes the perception of of whether something is broken or not can you still have a, a great experience with a game that has occasional frame rate drops the fact is yes you can and the fact is that most people just don't even care or don't even notice that's why these games still continue to sell because most people don't consider occasional frame rate drops as a game being broken yeah. You know, so um, that's why the devs keep doing it, and I think it's hilarious because PC Gamer put out um, PC Gamer put out an editorial um, today where it was like, "Oh man, screw it, fuck PC gamers, right? Uh, it's another bad port." But they gave the game eight out of ten, so you know, why 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 weren't you mad about the performance issues doing the review? You know, because it's this it's it's sort of the sort of it's the difference between binary thinking where something is either great or terrible or the sort of the more nuanced experience, which is the full, full experience of the whole game, you know? So like the dis the discourse revolves around the binary, like dislike on off, you know, but like the personal experience, you'll, you'll play, you'll probably play Star Wars and not give a crap that it drops frames every now and then you give even less of a crap. If you've got very refresh rates. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, Parker Petroff in the super in the uh, Patreon says, "Welcome back, guys. This is a longer one, so I'll just ask one question. I was wondering what your thoughts were about the CMA specifically and their ability to understand what they're being asked to make decisions on. I ask this because if you look through the document and why they ruled the way they did, it's riddled with inaccuracies that show a fundamental lack of understanding of what they are being presented with, and even after nine months, still unable to comprehend what they are being able to ask to look at." An example would be the 60 to 70% of cloud gaming market was determined by saying every Game Pass Ultimate subscriber is an xCloud user. That's not accurate. xCloud isn't even available in every country you can subscribe to Game Pass Ultimate on. Even if Game Pass Ultimate is available to you just because you have access to it doesn't mean you're a user of it. They would need to know the unique monthly active users who logged into xCloud and played a game, then compare that to other cloud providers. Another example of their lack of understanding is the CMA saying cloud providers don't receive a cut of the revenue for in-app transactions. This is because providers like Boosteroid, GeForce Now, etc., you aren't making a purchase through the cloud provider. You are linking your existing account and playing on Steam, Epic, etc. So the 30% of the in-app fee goes to the platform the game is on, 
that you're making the purchase through with 70% going to Microsoft. The cloud provider isn't operating a storefront or a part of the mon monetary transaction in the game, DLC, or microtransactions. They just get the subscription fee. GeoForce now getting cut of an in-app purchase is like Microsoft getting a cut for each Steam purchase because Steam runs on Windows. The entire document is filled with illogical and just wrong conclusions on how what they are talking about works. You don't get to invent or make up your own facts to support your opinion. However, that's what the CMA document was for page after page, which is why I was curious on specifically your thoughts on the CMA and if you think they are qualified to do what they do. As to me, this brings into question every other decision they have made. Well, exactly. I mean, we talked about this earlier a little bit. So kind of answer your question. I think they're a combination of corrupt and incompetent. I think they focused on this sort of this they're focused on cloud because exactly like you say, they can make up facts. They can say, oh, Microsoft will be a dominant monopoly, blah, blah, blah. And these the, these are the reasons why. And oh, cloud games, cloud gaming is rapidly growing. Yeah, by what what metric? What metric is it growing rapidly by? And they talk about how Game Pass has 25 million subscribers and therefore Microsoft's a dominant player in cloud when there's only 5,000 cloud players at any one time in the UK. You know, that's the capacity of xCloud in the UK. It's 5,000 concurrent users, which is hilarious, you know. And the thing is, I, I get the impression by, from Brad Smith bringing that up is that they never asked this. They never talked about this. They never mentioned any of this stuff to Microsoft in their discussions. So there is isn't there is an air of incompetency there. So either it is incompetent or it is just indeed corrupt. You know, they're hoping that, um, you know, they, they can ideologically align with the FTC. That, that's, their, that's their choice of wording, by the way. They, they're aligned with the FTC is their choice of wor wording. The CMA literally said that in an interview on Sky News. They're aligned with the FTC. So like is that is that what their their goal is here to just be aligned with the FTC is it ideological is it incompetence it's one of those but the fact the, the thing that it isn't is facts based so and now you're just sort of relying on the 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 idea that facts can get can win in the United Kingdom and that's just not how the UK works if facts can win in the UK Brexit wouldn't have happened I I don't care where you are on the political spectrum, or if you still you or if you're still delusional enough to think Brexit was a good idea. But there isn't a single demonstrable benefit from Brexit. There isn't mm -hmm. a single one. There isn't a single facts-based benefit from Brexit happening. Not a single damn one. You know, um, apart from like maybe if like you're so you're so jaded that it's just like oh yeah my side won. If that's the benefit for you, great. But like in in real terms, everyone in the UK is poorer. Inflation is worse in the UK than it is in any other major economy because of Brexit, the red tape that it's introduced. And, um, you know, the fact that we no longer control our borders hilariously, which is one of the reasons, one of the things that they said the UK will get from this is control of the border. There's, there's more illegal immigrants coming to the UK than ever because France doesn't bother to police them anymore because they don't have to. They're not obligated to do it anymore, you know? So it's kind of, facts don't win in the UK. And the thing is that everyone was warned about this. They were like, and you know what they called it? They called it Project Fear, Rand. They called it Project Fear. The media called it Project Fear. All these, all these so-called experts telling us how to think. Screw those guys. Project Fear, my ass, mate. Everything that Project Fear said came to pass because Britain doesn't operate on facts. And, you know, that's the, that's the kind of environment that they, they need to deal with. They don't understand what they're dealing with here. Microsoft doesn't. And yeah. it sucks, you know. Indeed. But, uh, yeah, thanks for all the questions. Uh, thank you guys for being here. I think we've come to the end of the show. Um, I got to go pretty – I think we got the uh, wake to go to and funeral on Sunday and Monday. Uh, so, uh, you know. Got I'm some sorry, things I need to do. You need to get cleaned up and you know buy some things. But um, yeah, it's fun. This uh, this helped me out a lot. Uh, I, you know, talking to you, seeing all the people in chat, helped me forget a lot of uh, you know the the bad week I've had the last couple of weeks. So I want to thank each and every one of you for being here for episode you know two sixty three of uh, Xbox Two Podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. We have King David. For an Xbox 2 Plus 1 on Tuesday, that should be pretty damn good. 
I'm, I'm sure King David has a lot of things to say. And then, um, yeah, we'll be back next week on Friday. Uh, May's here. We're a month away from the showcase. Um, really excited to see what Xbox has to show there. So, um, yeah, uh, can't wait to dive into Jedi Survivor, even though it's apparently not great right now, but I'm still, you know, want to play it. So, oh man. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. I hope you all have an incredible, really good weekend. And, uh, what do we want to say, Jess? Keep it gaming. Keep it gaming. Keep it gaming, baby. Keep it gaming. Like, you know, keep, leave the doom and gloom at the door because like doom and there, gloom, there's all those of reasons to be positive about the future of Xbox yeah. without ABK. We got here without ABK. We yeah. stuck with Xbox for all the bullshit and things are better than yeah. ever. Like Enjoy- on paper. So. Red falls out on Monday for those of you who want to play it at 30 frames or play it on PC. So enjoy that. And we'll be back on Friday with another show. Well, Tuesday for Patreon show. But uh, until then, love you guys. See you next week. Take care, everybody.